Tired of ads interfering with your favorite sports podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening is available on Amazon Music for all the music plus top podcasts included with your Prime membership. Stay ahead of the game by downloading the Amazon Music app for free or go to amazon.com slash sports ad free. That's amazon.com slash sports ad free to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Here's a cool fact. A crocodile can't stick out its tongue. Another cool fact, you can get short-term health insurance for a month or just under a year in some states. United Healthcare short-term insurance plans are designed for people who are between jobs, coming off their parents' plan, or turning a side hustle into a full-time gig. Underwritten by Golden Rule Insurance Company, they offer flexible, budget-friendly coverage with access to a nationwide network of doctors and hospitals. Get more cool facts about United Healthcare short-term plans at uh1.com. Hello, Egg Chasers. This is the Egg Chasers Rugby Podcast, the podcast about rugby that doesn't take itself or the game too seriously, and the podcast about rugby that is there for you 52 weeks of the year, every single Monday morning, as we have been for over 10 years into our 11th season, and we're getting to the business end of season number 11 as well. Champions Cup quarterfinals to talk about, much more besides. Joined in the rugby dungeon, at, this is a very civilised time to be doing this podcast, gents. I mean, it's nice, it's light outside and everything. It's still light outside at the minute, and that's because... Uh, Phil's just done his wingman job of picking JB up from the airport. After well done, a, Phil. A surprise trip for your birthday, JB. Yeah, went to Nice. It was awesome. Went to Nice and then went to Cannes. I love those. Well, one's a town, one's a city. Lo- love it there. See, we went to Nice on a rugby weekend. Well, lots of espresso martinis and lots of cobbled, uh, cobbled streets, Irish bars, knees ups. Yeah, well, so I was wandering around Nice and I was thinking, I recognise this place. But I, I had no idea where I was. So I was trying to relocate... The nightclub that we went to, which was down some stairs, but I don't know where it was. <laughs> I couldn't find the light for me. I couldn't find where we watched the um, France j- Jip on. Um, oh, there's, there's only like two Irish bars there, right? No, it wasn't. Right, in, like, the no, no, town, no, no, no. in the old town. It wasn't an Irish bar. Oh, no, no, no. We were was... in a pretty swanky bar. Oh, yeah, we were. And we were sitting having cocktails. Yes, what, that's right. Watching and France, France Jip on. Jip on. Jip on. In the La de France, uh, La Defense Arena. And I could not find that. I walked up and down the strip try, trying to find that place. I could not find it. Which is exactly what you do on a romantic weekend. You relive what you did with your mate. <laughs> Where are these stairs to the nightclub? <laughs> no, no, we had a great time in that. Trust me. <laughs> How you doing, Phil? I'm okay. I'm very good. I'm, I was only picked up uh, JB from the airport because uh, my wife called JB yesterday in a panic because she wanted um, someone big and strong to help me lift a climbing frame over a wall into the garden, which I subsequently managed to do. And so there was no benefit from from our side for receiving JB other than me picking him but up. But already struck the deal, you see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well played. Yeah. Well played. You did all right out of that I deal. You did all right. You wait, wait and, oh, that's great negotiating that. <laughs> isn't it? Give away something which, is not, something which isn't important <laughs> to me. Something which is very important to film. Well played. Well played. Right. Uh, there's a lot of rugby to talk about. Any news this week to speak of? I don't think there really is, is news. There? There's huge news. What's that? Well, the women are going to play with size 4.5 balls. Oh, yeah. Right. So should we put, let's put a little pin in that. Yeah. That's, that, that's an interesting discussion. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, you can always get in touch with us, by the way. Contact chasers at gmail.com and I will pepper the podcast with some questions and with some thoughts. Um, let's just dive into it. We've got four Amazing games. There are, I mean, admittedly, there's four Challenge Cup games as well. I kept a bit more of an eye on those than I have done mm-hmm. previously. Why is that, Tim? Because th- there's, like, well, last weekend, for example, there was eight Champions Cup matches. How can you watch any more than eight games? Correct. Yeah, okay, in one fair, weekend? fair, fair. Oh, it's not because you've got, uh, just because the rugby is on, oh, just not because you yeah. care about the, ch- yeah. Yeah, the lunchtime yeah. kickoffs were, were there was no cha- Champions Cup games at 12.30 PM, well, so. just before we get into the games, can I just raise some concern? Not concerns, but I'd like to know your opinions. Do you think it works better to have one game Friday night, two games on Saturday, and then one game on Sunday, or two Saturday, two Sunday, all like they did it this weekend? I do like a Friday night kickoff if you're going to have four games. I do as well. So yeah. I, I did watch, um, not all, but some of the Gloucester Ospreys game, um, and it did feel a uh, good win for Gloucester. Um, they closed out the game well. But it did feel a bit underwhelming compared to the spectacle that was to come on, <coughs> certainly the Saturday. Yeah. But I guess that's why you put you. But they used to do Champions Cup games. 
No. Is it? No. What was it called? Heineken Cup. No, no, Champions Cup. What's the junior Ch- competition? Challenge Cup. Challenge Cup, thank you. This is on Thursdays. Thursdays. Yeah, they would occasionally. Well, that would be more my liking. So I've got something on Thursday which I would never normally watch. When it comes to the business end of the season, I want to spread out the game so I can see every one of them. I was ready to watch on Friday night in Nice. And to my horror, I realised that there was no game on. No Champions. No Champions Cup, yeah. yeah. And I'm not watching Just Gloucester. Gloucester Ospreys. <laughs> back to back to back on Saturday is quite a slog, isn't it? I it mean, is. it's glorious. I mean, it, if, yeah. you do... if you've got the, if you've got, because it's like Super Saturday, it's a replica, yeah. replica of Super Saturday, which is always amazing, but it is a slog. If you've got other yeah. things to do, they but, don't get done. But particularly like for the last 15, 20 minutes of the Leinster La Rochelle game, I was like, um, sorry, what was the late game? Northampton. 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 So yeah, that, I was yeah. like, oh, game's done. I've, I've watched After six f- hours of rugby today. I'm, I'm, uh, that's fine. I don't need to see the last. 15 minutes. Well, yeah. They should have been clever, shouldn't they? And put the ho- the Highland... No, no. Come on, I can't talk. The Harlequins game on last. last. No, one would, <laughs> no one would turn off. Yeah. <laughs> that game. Let's start there. What a match. Wasn't it? Just, I mean, what a result, obviously, for the for Quins. And I think we gave we gave them a shot. But but just chances. I, think, I, 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 don't, I don't think I really... I think you two did. You two were more confident that they had a shot. Had a shot, I, yeah. I really didn't... Like maybe it's overconfidence, hubris from my beloved Bordeaux. I genuinely thought Harlequins would just get steamrolled. Yeah, and I, I was so wrong. I was pretty confident they were going to lose, but I thought, you know, if you can score points, you can change the complexion of a game. You can damage the team um, mentally as much as anything else. Now, when I saw the team that Bordeaux were putting out without Jalabert, which is, of course is probably even bigger than Pernod. Well, actually. yeah, I was going to say the Jalabert was expected. They knew yeah. he was injured. Pernod was was not expected. Yeah. And then you think, well, there is there is a chance. There's more than a chance here. And I think that's exactly what happened. It, they just took their chances as and when. But the the bit that I was surprised about was the poor performance of Bordeaux at the set piece, yeah. line out and scrum. And the the counter to that is the actual the dominance of Quinns yeah. without Marla. Yeah. Oh. The scr- the Finn Baxter put in a performance for the ages. That he was, was brilliant, wasn't he? W- w- like, almost, Will Collier was even better. Yeah, Will, Will Collier, Collier was super They were both amazing as well. As, as, well. But I just want to say, for the record, is, is a lot of people will be going, oh, Will Collier, great, he should be playing for England. Well, he can't anymore because he's going to Castro this uh, this summer. Is he? Yes. Oh, Jesus. I know, but, <laughs> but let the record show, on this podcast, we have been Many banging times. the drum for Will Collier for years. Yeah, I mean, I think anyone that knows about scrimmaging... We'll say Will Collier. I, I was fairly late on the bandwagon to Will Collier, but I tell you who has been talking about him for a long time is David Flatman. David Flatman talks about Will Collier continu- continuously and has done so, I think, maybe since the start of his podcast. And I think a lot of people that know about scrimmaging have said that. I've kind of, eh, you know, if he's that good, he would eventually um, get selected. But this weekend, he was an absolute warrior. There was one particular phase of play where he sort of turned to the crowd like a gladiator. He's <laughs> massive as well. He's huge. Yeah, and so yeah, and bearing in mind, it's it's not like it's been an area of strength for England, but it's been a, it's been an area where we've had significant. Week. It's probably the poorest position in England. Well, it, it, the, depth, and the depth chart is the chart. It, yeah, it, yeah, that and that twelve. And 12 well, just riddle me this, and this is a serious question. I'd love to know if anyone can give me a substantive answer. What does Will Collier not do that Dan Cole does do? Uh, turnovers. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, a legitimate da- thing Dan Cole can do. He can do, but he's also a bit of a penalty machine on those as well. Like, it's a it's a coin flip every time. Is he going to get a penalty? Is he going to give a penalty away? He, he does, it's not he, an anti-Dan Cole but, thing, I don't no, think. No, no, it's not an no, anti-Dan no, Cole it's, thing. It's, just, it's, it's the nature of the jackal and the da- referee. Um, yes. Will Collier probably can't play the straight man in a duo as well as Dan, <laughs> Dan Cole can. <laughs> yeah, and to be fair, Will Collier's had a lot of experience with Joe Marler, so I don't know, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know where he falls down there. Yeah. Joe Marler has to be the next guy to go to France, right? With his tweet this week? Well, that, but the other thing as well is, do you keep a very highly priced prop around when you've got Finn Baxter ripping up trees that's yeah. what i would think and it, probably not for quins marlow you would assume will be worth less in his next deal than he is in his current therefore he's probably worth I his think, current deal in, to someone yeah. in france joe marlow's kids are of an age where and it's the same reason i thought i, I think courtney laws really did want to stay in northampton mm. is his kids are of an age and he's just taken a financial decision to go to breathe mm. but I, th- I think joe marlow 
He's very settled where he's living, and his kids are young. I think yeah. I think he'll desperately want to stay, even if it means he takes quite a chunk less money. I just think, yeah, I think he's gonna. I think if I was Quinns, you've got to put sentiment to one side and club loyalty because it's a professional sport now with a salary cap, and it's a difficult one because I think not only has Joe Marler been a great Harlequin, he's probably been one of the, he's probably is at some point an England great. You know, he's a vet, well, not maybe not great, but a seriously, seriously talented player for for this generation. Yeah, I, I think Quinn's will get to keep him, and I think he'll but accept a lot less cash. I think he'll, he'll accept a lot less cash. Mm. I mean, if they do, which that, is ideal. It's perfect, isn't it? Well, we, we did when we were, uh, I won't say any numbers, but when we were having uh, a couple of Heinekens in Paris with a uh, former Quinn's director of rugby, there were some numbers um, mentioned about another England player who stayed at Quinn's for substantially less money oh, yeah. than the previous deal in Danny Kerr. Mm. Yeah. And Danny Kerr, is, it's proven worthwhile for him, both for his family but also because he's then got another, I don't know, 20 England caps over the last two there or three years. There is something, years, isn't there? I mean, like, is, so Danny Kerr would be a good example of somebody who is still very much in the... That's, that's 400k. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone who is very much in the English rugby public eye. I think that's important because if he'd gone to France, so Dan Robson is a guy who's in France, not very much in the public eye for... Especially not because power... Are playing in the or not playing in Champions Cup, like yeah. Jack Willis is in the public eye. And the, well, the difference is with the older players, like Danny Kerr, does a load of stuff for BBC. He does uh, broadcasting left, right, and centre. Yep. Um, he's very well known and probably on balance, he probably could get a better monthly paycheck in France. But depending on where he wants to go with his career, staying in the public eye in England isn't he's a terrible more, idea. Yeah, he's more yeah. valuable. Uh, we've got an email here just to move us on to the actual substance of the game here. Um, the, it's from Ali Thompson. And he says, Harley, come all without, come all within. You'll, you'll not see nothing like the mighty Quinn. Come all without, come all within. You'll not see nothing like the mighty Quinn. Isn't so, that, that's a double negative. That means you will not see nothing. You will see something. You will see something like the mighty Quinn. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> they need to have a word with that. They themselves really about do. those lyrics. Yeah, <laughs> particularly, you know, the average cost of education in the, in the Quinn's crowd is not nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So and by the way, not nothing is a double negative. It's yeah. That's how that's how you that's how you use it, boys. It's definitely something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this game then, uh, wild. It was it was nuts because both teams, they they could do. Uh, they both scored pushover tries at very different points, but oh my god, some of the tries, some of the tries from both teams, like one or both of Will Porter's try. De Portier's try, the BL oh, Barry try. The pick up off his laces. Oh, yeah. The Boros try. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Boros to get to the point where he scores the try. Oh, just the whole thing, the Tyrone Green try. It was just. I've never seen anything like it. No, I like, think. Of that, that level to be scoring those tries can so yeah. frequently. Yeah. It was the ability of both teams to identify space and numbers yeah, consistently yeah. and not really worry about where they played from, particularly Quinn's. Like, you know if Quinns are moving the ball, they're moving it for a reason. It is not empty-headed, width for width's sake. I would just caveat it with this, though. I think the game was won probably in the first half when Quinns realised that the Bordeaux pack was terrible. In fact, they were borderline disgraceful. So the, the problem that they had, you mentioned the scrimmaging, which is undoubtedly a problem. But, you know, teams sometimes lose scrums. That's fine. Um, the line out, which is never acceptable. But the thing which really concerned me is the Bordeaux pack were not going forward. In fact, they were getting battered. And if your pack doesn't go forward, well, what are you left with? And I wonder if this was the Bordeaux recipe for success all along, which is have incredible backs. And when it's time to turn it on, you can turn it on. And Pernod will score you a bunch of points and Jalabert's ace. And they've just neglected that pack because they were they were garbage. There's no other word for it. They were utter, utter garbage. Their, their prop... Not Ben Tamafuna, but the Georgian fella. I've, ne- I've never seen weaker, weaker carrying. Every time he got the ball, he was two, two yards behind. It was like a passive set up to box kick. Yeah, what it? was he but, doing? Yeah. Go forward. It's not a difficult game. Go forward. I mean, he'd be the first guy, first guy that I took off. Uh, but all round, they looked weak, passive, borderline cowardly. I, I thought their pack was pathetic. On the flip side, to to give credit to to Quinns, one guy who has suffered from the 
mantra that, oh, you have to be a certain size and shape. And that whole thing we talk about in English rugby, where there's so many good players that you end up going for the ones that look like the international player, quote mm-hmm. unquote. Will Evans is ace. Yeah. He's ace. He is he ace. He was ace. So he got really badly injured, didn't he? He came back. He had a couple of games got injured again. And every time he gets on a rugby field, he, he does something. He does something mesmeric. I don't know what it is. Some guys are just, uh, they've got wiry strength. Well, he's just brave. He is brave. Like, There's actually, no yeah, think about um, uh, Jacques Berger, for example, one of one of our favourite ever mm. players at, at any English club or any club f- full stop. He wasn't the biggest, quickest. Basically, he, he, big scaffolder. He just had the biggest heart of anyone on that pitch. And I think Will, Will Evans has just got a giant heart. He has, but he's also got an incredible sense of timing. Mm. Some of his turnovers are just incredible. And he must have some unbelievable man strength. You know, that ability just to wrestle people off balls. and it, it, Yeah, he's, he is some player. But you're right, I think he suffers from the fact that he's just not built like Tom Curry mm. we, or Jack Willis or you know, one of the lads they look at and think, yeah, that looks like an international. And this is the England problem because I think Will Evans as a Scotland player would be one of the best in the world. Will Evans as a Welsh player would be probably have folk songs written about him. <laughs> <back now. laughs> um, on that, on the back row, I thought, Cunningham South coming back in was ace as well. Yes, yeah, until but, he blew up. It, yeah, he yeah, just would, gassed. But, but it was it was it, he, first yeah. game back since yeah. he got injured. Yeah, um, first game in whatever it is. Well, five, and six also, weeks. to be fair, it was completely reasonable to gas. Did you yeah. see how many carries yeah. he made yeah, yeah, in the yeah. first ten? Oh, hundred percent. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yeah. knocking it. Yeah. So no, no rugby and playing in that heat at that ferocity. Twenty one. Yeah. He's twenty one. He is so strong. He yeah. Is so I, strong. I really think he is the real deal. As yeah, well. I tend to agree with you. And, and Finn, but just, and we've already touched on it, but Finn Baxter. So he's playing against a bloke who, at least um, according to the stats, if you Google the weight of Finn Baxter and the weight of Big Ben, Benny T. 110 to 150, something like that? Yeah, one, 116 to about 150. So he's giving away the best part of 30, 35 kilograms in wow. weight. And he's also, he's probably earning. One fifth of what, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe, so. maybe one tenth. If uh, if if Finn Baxter's still on an academy contract, he could legitimately be one tenth or he could be on less. Four, he could be on forty five grand. Yeah, and likely to be on eighty k. I'd say at twenty two. Twenty two, yeah, yeah, like okay. minimum. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, let be a senior so, academy. Eight, let's say eighty k. Let's say he's eighty two hundred k, which is which is good money. Ben Tamifanua, who was poached by Bordeaux from Racing ninety two. Don't forget. Yep. Will be one of the most... Uh, so he's not going to be um, Owen Farrell or Sia Khaleesi money. He'll be four, he, four, four 500k. K, yeah. He'll be four, 500k. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it, yeah, he will be. So type of could comfortably be five or more times earnings. And Finn Baxter came out comfortably on top in that battle. Dispatched him. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't just the scrimmaging, though. Like His handling was great. Yeah, yeah. His rampages around the park. He, that guy... I think it's fair to say that guy's got a future. Definitely. Mm. Definitely. I just wonder now what Quinns are going to do in the next round and how do you... I think the, the biggest problem you have when you face Quinns is nerves because you're not entirely sure how <laughs> you're going to beat them. So Bordeaux tried kicking away a lot of balls to start with and they soon found out that kicking away the balls Quinns was a horrible idea. <laughs> but So then what do you do next? Do you, do you hold on to the ball and let them turn you over when Will Evans uh, sniffs it? I, I don't really know the answer. I think... You're going to have to have a pack like Leinster or Toulouse, which is unfortunate for Quinns, and you've just got to keep hold of the ball and keep grind, grinding them down. I think that's probably your best option. I don't really know. If th- what we probably saw was Quinns playing about as well as Quinns can play and Bordeaux not being at the level, anywhere near their level. That's probably what we saw, and that was enough, and, and that's not to take anything away from Quinns, but that was enough to mean that they came out narrowly in a win. Yeah, but, but Quinns like, did this to Bord- Bath a few Bord- weeks ago, did they not? Did yeah, they but then Bath? they got absolutely spanked by Saracens as well. Yeah, but that's because... Yeah. Uh, when you actually track down. Quinn's last four games, it's insane. <laughs> well, I mean, theoretically, consistent. Bristol should have had a premiership title over the last five years, but Quinn did Quinn's things. It's just what they do, isn't it? 28-0 it's... down after 28 minutes. Yep, and then they go and win. You know, yep. They've got quite a history. I mean, Montpellier... I think suffered at the hands of Quinns last time round, maybe two years ago, when they had a comfortable lead in the first leg and then got summarily battered in 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 the, in, in the second leg. They can just score depending on what day it is, and that's a hell of a superpower. 
I'd say there's, there's an equal amount of Quinns went and won that and just and all they've got they've got to do exactly the same against Toulouse just roll the dice have a go yeah. go, if, go go out on your feet swinging scoring twice early doors makes all the difference doesn't it because it makes everybody doubt themselves it makes mm-hmm. fly halves think is this the right strategy you know uh, do we well, continue to kick do we play so what I think I think there was a compounding issue yes doubt creeps in but Jalabert Penno on the field I don't think the rest of the team at Bordeaux doubt themselves to the extent that they did uh, and that's where you tr- struggle against Toulouse because however bad Toulouse play you, you would stand in uh, be one of the players yeah, in Toulouse let's say you're not one of the top players you'd, but you'd be looking around and going there's Roman Intermac there's Antoine Dupont mm-hmm. um, but uh, the, the irony of this is there's Mal Vacker and I totally agree Miyafu with you and Jack Willis it's yeah. the um, it's the red like it's, what do you call it the red baron effect you know you paint the aeroplane red so everyone can see that the best guy is still in the fight um, you know, seeing those guys that you mentioned would make a difference if they weren't scoring, but they were scoring. No, no, I, they were scoring know, for fun. But I think the doubt, because I think what we can say is, and this is again to take nothing away from Quinns, Bordeaux were poor by their standards. They were very poor. They were very poor. No, no the backs were good. That's not fair. Certain. Uh, no, 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 no. Their ten had an absolute stinker. I think that's because of the he pack. was horrendous. I think yeah, oh yeah. Th- it it could well be because of the pack. They scored some wonder tries from the back. Jalabert behind that pack playing the same would have done a lot, lot better than Garcia did. He was great last week. Yeah. yeah he, was, he was dreadful. Yeah. He was a tough, tough He got Shepard he got, he got shepherd, 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 cro- Shepherd's crooked at <laughs> half time. And Bordeaux were instantly better with Luca at 10. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Hmm. Poor Garcia. Poor old Garcia. Yeah. Tough day at the office. As you said, fair, fair, play. fair play to Quinzoff. I really, really did not think. I thought they had as close to zero percent chances you can get in a two horse race, but they they were a good value for it as well. well they, did, they thoroughly well, deserved it. Why don't you move on to the other winning English team? Well, just just a second, because mm. is this is this the case? So, um, just got an email from uh, Alex, who's a Quinns fan. He says, uh, "Love the pod, blah." I've got a question on semi final venues. Do they give the top seeded teams an unfair advantage? I'm a Quinns fan, and as unreal as this weekend is, I couldn't help noticing um, if Bordeaux triumphed as many thought, including yourselves. Yeah, you're quite right. What well I've pointed that out, uh, they would have had a home last sixteen quarter final and semi final. Likewise, Leinster had a home sixteen quarter final. They'll be travelling ten minutes down the road to play at Croke Park for their semis. Well, Quinns are going to be travelling to the stadium in Toulouse where the football the team football play stadium. where the rugby team regularly play yep. so the question he says is the competition loaded too heavily against challenging teams no it, if, if, if it wasn't a higher seed it'd be better yeah I kind of I can see why you'd think that like you you kind of think that the heroics from Quinns and anyone who goes away to win should deserve a little bit more but you've got to load it either your performance of the group stage or the performance of the in in the knockouts and, and it's loaded just, in the f- yeah. performance, performance of the group stage. So I talk over there, Phil, but there is another way to look at this, right? La Rochelle got battered this weekend, and I would say that one of the reasons they got battered was because of their travel sch- schedule, which was un- which was un- unkind. But hey, they put themselves in that position by not winning games. They, yeah, they lost to Leinster and to the Stormers yeah. in the group stages. Therefore. They've got to do the, go the hard route. Yep. Yeah, sorry, lads. Now, would it be fair to make Toulouse do that? Who have not put well, Toulouse might have put a foot wrong, but you see what I mean. To put the best team who have not put a put, put, foot wrong and have them eliminated uh, from the competition because I don't know, it's deemed fairer in some way. No, not really. If you've not done that, then that well, you're going to have the harder places to travel, and that's just the way of the world. And also, yeah. you would take away from the group stages, wouldn't you? So the yeah. seedings yeah. do matter. On the, Toulouse, yeah. and, just on that, <clears throat> Toulouse and Leinster, they are number one and number two ranked teams. Yeah, Neither of them lost a game. Toulouse got um, four bonus points from four games, so that's quite good. four five-point wins. They couldn't do any better. Leinster only dropped one single bonus point. Losers. Away at La Rochelle. Bottlers. Away at the, winner of, the, the winners from last year. So they, those two teams have earned it. Like, yeah, you wouldn't want those guys flying to South Africa and then to lose flying to South Africa and then to Dublin just so it's fairer. I, Although I will say that um, was it three years ago, twenty twenty one, when Ulster won all their um, group stage games, I had to lose. I got to lose because to lose <laughs> yeah. had injuries and only just snuck through. 
but that sometimes it works against you. And if you want to, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. So, <laughs> but yeah, I can't see, I can't see a real justifiable yeah. argument to switch it around. No, there, there is. I mean, because so what you're meant to get in the semi-finals is home country advantage. Now it is home country and city advantage for these two, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, but then, uh, what are they going to do? Make yeah. um, Leinster travel to Limerick or Cork? Yeah, or yeah or also Belfast. France. That, a, that would be ridiculous. France is a bloody big country. Now I don't yeah. know how easy it is to travel around France. Maybe you do, Sim. Train, but, trains are outstanding, but I mean, a b- bottom line is you want to see packed stadiums. You do. Exactly. And is it how far is it for us to lose fans to travel to? I don't know. Paris. I mean, I'm sure you can get there quite easily, but it's not the point, is it? And also, don't forget the final last year when Leinster had home stadium advantage and yeah. playing in the Aviva, yeah. which is there. They play half their games there. How did that go for them? <laughs> <laughs> Ask Stuart Lancaster. Yeah. Um, God, you- they're going to win it without Stuart Lancaster. <laughs> oh, we, we had we had some feedback on on that, by the way, on the podcast last week. Um, basically, people sort of going, "You're bang wrong." Stuart Lancaster arrived. Revolutionised the way they play. Revolutionised their attack, and in his first full season, they won the Champions Cup. And then nothing else ever since. But he, he <laughs> but won the. But, but they won the it. Champions Cup. I don't think he revolutionised. He anything. won the Champions <laughs> Cup. But he, he was only a senior and then coach. won. What was it? Four back to back URCs as well. I or whatever could, I, could, I, was. I, if you're yeah. telling me I couldn't win a URC with with <laughs> Lancer, you're nuts. <laughs> I could win. I could win multiple URCs. I I could win. At least another Heineken Cup Leinster. <laughs> At least one more. With this team. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Comfortably. I mean, it's like, give me the give me the Fijians in, 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 in the Olympics. I'll at least get you a silver medal. <laughs> Come on, boys. Come on. So there, there has been more discussion um, on travel and schedules. I was going to say this is a good time because yeah. you brought up travelling. Good good segue into it. So there was there's complaints. I've seen... Two of the high profile, so Austin Healy was complaining about it in comms in the Northampton game with the Bulls, which we will obviously touch on, and I think Stephen Jones as well. There was an article in the there was an article in the Times from a source. Uh, the article was by Will Kelleher, who I know, and mm-hmm. he's, he's a legit journalist, so he's not going to say he there's a, legit. he's not going to say there's a source unless there was a source. Mm-hmm. A source um, suggesting that EPCR will launch an investigation into the Bulls. Rightly so for. Naming a weakened team for the quarterfinal against Northampton. Discuss. Well, this is how it unfolded in my little world. I looked at the teams on Friday when they were released, and I had in the back of my mind because I'm, I'm no URC fan, I don't really know the teams. But we had the discussion of like Northampton are really good; they can score points. I'm liking their backline. I think as you, Tim, pointed out, hang on a minute. Yeah, you know, the Bulls are pretty good. Listen yeah. to all these players. Like, bloody the, hell, yeah, actually, yeah. The back line with yeah, Billy is. LaRue and Kanan Moody and Kurt Lee Aransa and Johan Goosen and Ambrose Papier. David Creel's pretty handy in the centre. Yeah, that is a serious, serious back line. So I, I, I opened up my Ultimate Rugby app. Uh, I mean, and now, I'm, now I'm really torn. Is it Ultimate Rugby that's wrong? <laughs> it's not been the first time. Is it me? Do I not know my franchises? Did Tim get it wrong on the podcast? I, I don't know. I read, I read this backline. I was like, well, who are these people? Yeah. Like, none of them. I don't recognise any of them. And it was just a bit of a problem. Now, elaborating on that, what is the point in the Bulls if they're not taking the European Cup seriously? I understand that you could be in the top 14 like Leon, and you could be fighting relegation and you just need to stay in the top 14 because that is your bread and butter. The Bulls are not in that situation. The Bulls will be in the URC no matter what. They'll have a share of the revenue no matter what. Yada, 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 yada. This should be the pinnacle I'm, of what they want I'm, to achieve. I'm glad you've drawn an equivalence because the, the initial thing, or I'm glad you've at least made your argument there because the obvious thing to say when there's been this uproar and people speaking out against... Uh, the Bulls this week is where was the complaints last week when Leon sent a pants team to Pretoria to play the Bulls and you've just said top four they're they're battling for relegation in the top 14 and we did we did complain about it oh yeah we did but also said there is yeah there there was no articles in newspapers there was no talk of an EPCR investigation same goes what about um, the teams the teams that sent absolutely bobbins teams in the pool stages when I was working last year was it last year or the year before uh, on the Champions Cup Gloucester sent a legit C team to Leinster. Yeah. And there was no EPCR investigation. So I, I guess the obvious thing to say is 
Why is there an uproar now about this? I think two reasons. Um, one, they don't. The, the Bulls have no reason to forfeit this, really. Zero reason. Really? Uh, well, you can give me yeah, that give in a second. I'll give you an argument. Um, and I can't remember the second reason because just in, in sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So you're going to say it was top fourteen relegation top 14. thing, Leon? Oh yeah, no, sorry. The other one was it's it's one of the biggest weekends in the rugby calendar. Isn't yeah, it? the quarterfinals it's, it's a are huge yeah. weekend. The quarterfinals are more special than pools, especially if like. If if Gloucester have to go to I can't remember the fixtures, but if they're going to Leinster and say one other higher seed than them, let's just say I don't know La Rochelle or Toulouse or sort of one of those teams, or Bordeaux, then they've not got much chance. So you can't really blame them. No, I will say this: Sale Sharks did, did it the right way back in the day. So. Steve Diamond would <clears throat> fight like mad not to get relegated one season and the next season <laughs> because he just avoided relegation. He's got a few more games uh, which you can play with. He would usually get uh, seventh place and that was enough for a, t- a Champions Cup spot. And the next season they would play the, play in the Champions Cup and then the same thing had happened. They would decline because of the rigours of the tournament. So it's a real thing. But even Sale... Right when they knew they had an uphill battle because they had to be fit every single week. I remember when to, uh, Toulon came to town and they put out the absolute best team that they could, two two games running, despite not having a chance and despite knowing that next year they could get relegated. Because what is the point in trying so hard last season to get to a competition which you're going to throw away? Mm. Is that that competition is special, and I don't know why the Bulls did it. Really. Let me make the argument. Please do for mm. Jake White. So and it just it's worth looking back at um at the last few weeks to to just get a sense of where the balls are at. So it was uh on the 23rd of March, 20, 23rd of March, they played away at Dragons and then they followed it up the following week with a game uh yeah, uh away to Leinster. Mm-hmm. So presumably they stayed in the UK for that period of time. Yeah. Travelled back on the 30th of March. Anyway, anyway, then they then they had a game in the Champions Cup the following weekend. Wait. Who did they play 30th of March, Tim? Yeah. Um, oh, they played Leinster away. Oh, so the uh, Dragons, Leinster, Leinster. travelled back. Dragons, Leinster, travelled back, played Leon? played Leon yeah. at home. That was on the Saturday. They had to wait until the games were finished on the Sunday before they knew who their opponent was. Okay. Uh, at which point they could then book flights and things, mm-hmm. and um, it, they they then travel they travelled for this game in Northampton. In about five, four days' time, they play against Munster in Pretoria, which is it, which is a, an enormous game in the context of the, the, the URC and the the battle for home semi final spots. Uh, and then they then they then they're yeah, they play two games at home. Then they would be back for Champions Cup semi-final had they beaten Northampton. Okay. So w- when you actually look, like it's it's fine. One thing flying from Manchester to Nice, as you have done this weekend. <laughs> yeah, couple, it is. A couple of hours and a 12-hour trip both ways. All of, the, all of the logistical dramas in that. I think there is a fair argument. I don't think Bulls wanted to do this. No, I agree. But I, they but definitely I, didn't want to do it. I think when you actually just look at... Last week, last week they were in Pretoria. This week they'd be in Northampton. Next week they'd be back in Pretoria playing against Munster. That in itself is mammoth, well, a mammoth challenge. Not, not, but that's that's not just in isolation. Then there are games either side of that before and after, and the consequence could be they went bird in the hand, two in the bush. We have to beat Munster. We'd like to beat Northampton. We well, might, we might end up shit in the bed and losing both. both. We'd ra- we'd rather just go all in on one, well, which is exactly what Leon did last week. Yeah, for uh, the same reason. I would so t- you saying that the URC league, there's no relegation. No, there's, there's, not, there's, still, not, there's, not, there's still home semi final spots, which is massive when you, when say, you have to travel twelve thousand miles for a game. I'm not going to say that Leon being relegated from top fourteen is an existential threat to their club because it's not that big, but it's bloody big. You know, it's a serious, serious. Oh, it's problem huge, one, right? Uh, Bulls do not have that threat. So that's the first thing I say. Second thing is, if I'm looking at that schedule and I'm looking at such terrifying pictures as Dragons Away, I might look at rotating my squad in a slightly different a different way. Particularly if I think, oh, Leinster, we're going to win that one. Maybe we are, maybe, maybe we're not. Um, 
Jake White said it's important to rotate your squad, and I agree with him. And he's just dropped the ball here. He's thrown away a golden opportunity for, for the Bulls. I do not even see what the point of the Bulls is if they're not in the European Cup uh, quarters they, well, and challenge. They, well, so... I mean, why not throw away the group so, games? So, so South African teams haven't got the 25, 30-year history that that we have as fans. Well, but or, they know or, what they signed up English. for. Yeah, I, I know. But did, no, did Jake White sign up for this? Or did the South African Union well, sign them up for well, this? let me say, Jake White is nothing but an employee. And Jake White's job is to win two competitions. Now, you might say, oh, yeah, actually, but, he, you know, just go and win the one. I, I disagree. I think it's the pinnacle... Of, Oh, the European Cup is a pinnacle of Northern Hemisphere rugby. You know, if you want to prove yeah, yourself quite, to be the best, quite, and, and they don't, they, do they don't have any history with it. So, well, then don't. Well, then in that case, they should never have signed up for it. Well, then, but this, by the same token, when I mean, when, you could make the same like, argument for Leon. To like, be fair. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. Leon, get out of the competition. Um, Gloucester last year, bugger off and don't play the game. Mm. There's, there's a few things going on here. One, they expanded the number of teams in this year's com- uh, in in the competition. Mm-hmm. They had they, they they've. M- Crowbarred in around a si- round of, no, they've crowbarred in around a sixteen and a quarter final back to back, and that is the biggest elephant in the room oh. here. Round of sixteen and quarter final back to back. Whilst I love watching my rugby and love there being two weekends completely jam packed with rugby, logistically from a fan's perspective, from a player's perspective, it is oh my ridiculous. God, the pennies just dropped. I've got it. Are you playing to your South African base? Because I have seen our inbox at the moment, and there's a lot of ma- very, very odd. And so you, you've grown no, a huge South African following. Are you appealing EPCR. to your base? No, EPCR, the, the, as I've just said, let's focus it in on this. I've talked about Leon. I've talked about Gloucester last year. Let, um, I've talked about, um, well, as you said, Steve Diamond did it a bunch of times with Sale Sharks, just put out, just waved the white flag before no, 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 the game was he played. He never did that. And, that, and that, and that was my point, because they wanted to be there. They thought that they worked so hard to get there. Okay, maybe and, until it was like, yeah. I, I mean, they had done it like the last two games, but until they were mathematically out, they always put out yeah, the okay. strong side. Okay. I thought that was important. So the elephant in the room here, and this is the point, is as ever, the administration of rugby is awful. Like one of the things that's happened this week is there's been talk of in 2028 a World Club Championship where what they will do is <laughs> stop the Champions Cup at the quarter-final stage and suddenly form a new competition with eight teams from Super Rugby to make a Super World Championship. And there would there would not be a, a winner of the Champions Cup crowned that year. What? So yes. What now? Yes. I, I miss that, I miss that genius idea. Crazy. Well, so that's what they're going to be doing in 2028. Huh? Uh, it hasn't been officially ratified, but this is basically well, all, good. All, all the unions and all the t- all the leagues are going yes, and the reason they're saying yes is because they're seeing the pound signs. What pound signs? Who's going to want to watch it? <laughs> what pound signs? Well, anyway, the, the theoretical, the pound theoretical pound, pound signs. Yeah, yeah. So as ever, so, so the back to back round of sixteen and quarter finals is a joke. It's a joke from a fan's it's, perspective and from a player's <laughs> perspective. It's ridiculous. Well, so I'm torn with this because I think it works really well because of like we spoke before about having the you have your um club domestic your club european or club regional yeah that makes your sense. international which i love i've actually loved having the yeah. last two weekends the stories flow we mm. you don't need to look back on the league i, I totally remind. agree with you however you can't do it with south african teams and like you it, can't do it with south african teams and you can't you, do it with big premiership big urc games in the middle on either yeah. end Immediately after, immediately before. I just think it's the cost of doing business. Yeah, I know it, oh, it, it is. It's it's very much. It's a trade off. Oh, I, I totally it's agree. A, it's a total trade off because what? you've got you've yeah. got access to this fifty million yeah. um, rugby mad market in South Africa, which people want. Like for lots of good reasons. There's brilliant teams, massive families, and TV deals. The rugby needs all those things. What do you? Um, Oh, I've completely forgotten. Uh, the, the, only, the only thing which I, I mean, I do take all your points on board, and they are important. The only thing which I don't really understand is they had to play the game. Why did they rest all of the Springboks? Yeah, I, I mean, I, they could have rest, rested some of them. I would have taken that. Like, okay, yeah, you have to, you're playing it strategically. You want to keep some guys in reserve. I reckon next had week. Munster been playing this weekend, they might have gone differently. But Munster have just had a had a weekend off, and and the game next week is massive. And I think there might be an element of, hold on, Munster is just going to be sitting up, putting their feet up while we're travelling for 24,000 miles. But the Bulls could have beat Northampton. And yeah. that is massive. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I mean you, you look at full-strength Bulls team and you think that could be the favourite here. 
Yeah, no, and I, if I they don't you. have a history in the European Cup, well, they will do after yeah. doing Northampton and yeah. maybe doing a semi final. Two games away from, from a Got, cup there. There is one. Ma- what, what's the mantra? Just to, just to round this point off from my perspective, what's the one mantra that the administrators of the game love to say, but actually of, prove with their actions that it's pretty much empty words? Oh, I have no idea. They the most important thing is player welfare. Player welfare. Ah, play, <laughs> good old player welfare. No. Cash, and and that's yeah. why EPCR are upset because they've been hoisted by their own petard. The, the, the greed. Oh, of, it is cash though. I mean, like the most important. Well, at least if they should be honest, say the most yeah, important yeah. thing is cash. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're annoyed at the Bulls. <laughs> well, yeah, I yeah, the yeah. most important thing is cash. Well, I mean, if there's going to be a comforting side, I don't of mind it. if they say that. There's going to be a comforting side of this story. Uh, believe what people do, not what they say. And if they are thinking about cash, it makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, fine. Uh, Point taken. I think your point is probably better illustrated with what happened with La Rochelle this weekend. I mean, that's how hard it is. And, you know, oh, yeah. That's what would happen to, to the Bulls. But they signed up for it. South Africa signed up for it. And you're two games away from a trophy. I have no sympathy for you, right? You send your best team. You put your best foot forward. Now, if you want to sabotage both competitions by sort of trying some clever rotation... It'll find by all means do so, but to throw one of the competi- competitions away, it's the greatest competition probably in world yeah. club rugby. It, so if Jake White had brought his best team, yep. what would you have done next next Saturday against Munster? They keep playing. That's what they're paid to do. Mm. Uh, I, you, know, you don't pay these guys nothing, right? They, they are paid to be world-class professionals. It is a job. You go and play. And all, I don't sh- know. The scheduling... Two days, tra- two full days travelling. It's hard. I mean, no one said it's easy, but, you know... Try being a f- bloody, I don't know, on-call 24-hour doctor or, or, or some such thing. Just just get on with it. Stop whinging. You sat on a plane. Yeah, and they had to play it anyway. All right? And someone else had to step into their shoes and step on that field well, and get battered. So, so sorry, here, here is one final thing which I thought, okay, which... Try fighting was, bloody in Afghanistan or, or whatever it is. Oh, yeah, it, you, you know, yeah. It's just a job. Get over yourself. Well, okay. <laughs> well, here's another thing. EPCR at the start of the season, say to every single club entering the Champions Cup, please tell us your squad for the Champions Cup. Fill in 41 names here. Mm. Th- I say EPCR then basically said, we think you need 41 players for a, for a Champions Cup season. And, and you cannot then complain about what 23 players appear in a team. Mm. So if EPCR think it's so important to have the high quality of players for every single match, this is so important, give them... 28 yeah, names. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. And then, and then, and then, and then teams always, cannot do this. Yeah, so I was going to go the other way with that. I thought you were going to say give South Africans five extra names. No. Just so they can... I was saying, actually, like again, judge you on your, your actions, not what you say. EPCR say give us 41 names and then whinge about which players you put out on the pitch from those 41. It was in, it was in EPCR's control about how strong or how weak teams could be. And this has happened yeah, many, many times before. But there is also an element of, you know, you give people leeway and... Um, they then take the piss. Uh, you know, I don't think he, he, I don't think in a million years that the organisers thought that someone's going to get to Wait. the quarterfinals of the world's greatest club competition and throw it away. People have done it. Uh, well, in the quarterfinals, I would hear no, Maybe who? not in the quarterfinals. Yeah, but not. we haven't had South African teams in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Well, I mean, if that's how the South Africans behave, maybe we don't want them. Well, I think what Phil just said to, to yeah. wrap it up is you cannot have this schedule with South African teams and expect it to work. Yeah, you've got to have a, a, a break, which I I would prefer it to be back-to-back. But I think the NFL teams do, do something similar. I mean, maybe not... 17 extent. games a season. Yeah, it's not, it isn't the same extent. But look, they had a game against Lyon, which wasn't that difficult. They played the Dragons, for God's sake. So, you know, who cares? You know, the, the URC is not as tough a league. They don't have relegation. I'm disappointed. I see why people won't uh, think it's justifiable. I do not. I think it's an app. In fact, I think the Bulls are an absolute disgrace. And I question what is even the point of, of the Bulls if they throw away a opportunity to win the greatest competition in club rugby. Well, if they go and shit, if, if, if they if they shit the bed in the URC, if, if, if they shit the bed in the URC, who gives a shit? Yeah. Well, this, the, is it URC? You brought up this last week. Yeah. The, the URC is a competition which has gained some traction. In South Africa, because uh, one of the teams won it, it's certainly better. But then uh, they, you know, they had an all in the first year of the South African teams been in it. It was, an then, all, it was an all South African final, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, uh, and it was was it Storms Bulls, I think. Uh, but then I think the or same Storm would, Sharks, would, maybe. Yeah, same would apply if they won the 
European Cup. They they could have been they could have made history, couldn't they? As the first South African team to do all the big U- European teams and had you know they could have been legends, but they decided to throw it, throw it away because they're <laughs> cowards, they're just, absolute cowards, they're pathetic. One, one one final point that's perhaps not quite that strong, but um, is against the Bulls and the way that they've done it would be. Remember Jeez. in 2020, I think it was 2020, it must have been, uh, COVID lockdowns, some of the insane lockdowns, um, where the Argentina team, because of the quarantines getting into, Aust- I think it was Australia yeah. that they played. Yeah. Um, they, the were, championship. they won in New Zealand. Well, they, they beat yeah. New Zealand for the first time. But I think they, I seem to remember the game actually being played in Australia. Australia yeah. But ah. they beat, the, beat New Zealand for the first time. They hadn't been training. They'd been locked in their hotel rooms, but yeah. been given two weeks, wasn't it? Fitness programs, and so they'd managed. So being locked in a plane for twelve hours is not perfectly conducive to playing your best rugby. But if you're intelligent, I think there are ways around it. You can train and maybe be in fighting shape to play two games of rugby yeah. with that much travel. I, it, it must be possible. So do we all agree? Oh God, imagine. Imagine not wanting to play. What does it say about the culture of that club that you don't want to play? <laughs> I think that's absolutely pathetic, actually. I'm thinking now, someone gave me the opportunity to play any quarterfinal. Oh, no, mate, you, you go. I'll stay here in, in, in I, okay. South Africka. I, 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 <laughs> I understand, worry, I understand why people are disappointed. I think you're flippant in how easy you think travelling and playing elite rugby is. I don't think I had this easy. I've been to Nice. I, I, I so, really struggle with so, self so, I do not think any so of these points, things are easy. I so have nothing I, with respect for professional I, players. I don't think. Uh, so I, I genuinely don't think it's it. It would be reasonable, and I don't think any team would well, do this. Well, hold, would be no, hold on. I, I, no travel. I don't think any English team, Irish team, or ever would Saturday to Saturday travel, or Saturday to Saturday to Saturday back to back to back travel travel. There and back across the world twice and play a game uh, four days after they arrive in another country, well, then then travel back and then play another game. The following. I just don't, I just don't think you France would get. France is no small place. And oh come on, it is not. You know, if it's you're two talking... hours top to bottom in a plane, if you're in a plane, of course, um, it was two hours top to bottom, in and a... also well, it is four a, hours in a train. It is a far, far harder league. It's night and day. We're not, we're, we're not talking like the child's league yeah, of the and, USA. And what, do a... Fran- and what do France do? They put their strong teams out of home and they send, they send the backup team uh, to most away games. Yeah, but not That's why they only win 50% of the game. I, I guess your argument would be, well, yeah, but they don't have the, they don't have the history. But La, but La Rochelle, bless them, they, they tried and they got a hiding. I respect them. I respect them. Downside more than the Bulls that, that hid, away, uh, uh, hid away in Pretoria. Oh mm. God, that's pathetic. The more I think about it, the more pathetic. I it think you're. Becomes. I think you're being de- de- deliberately uh, <laughs> provocative. Now. Provocative. Now. I think you're playing to your South African base. <laughs> I'm, honestly, this <laughs> I do. Genuinely, I think. I Why work, have you got like a hat say, saying "Make balls great again"? <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? I've just noticed it. <laughs> I worked at that game last year, uh, Leinster against Gloucester, as I say, and uh, it was a Gloucester C team in a, in a Champions mm. Cup pool game. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into that either. Well, it, ha- it happened in loads of them. Well, this is this is the problem that an EPCR. I think they've they've forced this situation themselves. They wanted the South African teams in, and the schedule back to back is really is almost impossible. Also, the pool stage means you can only win one. You you can win one game and get into the quarterfinals. So loads of teams in the pool stage put out bobbins teams mm. in the pool stage. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's the greatest competition in the world. Why wouldn't you want to win every game? Why wouldn't you? That's a great question. That's a great question. Well, if you like to be relegated, I, I see it. But the Bulls don't have that problem at all. Mm, okay, we sure. should we should um, talk a little bit about Northampton. Yeah, I was going to say Northampton won the game, didn't they? And actually, this game because the Bulls going into half time when it was twenty eight twenty two. Story of the weekend that with some of the games. Wasn't it? I, I was. Getting... Can you imagine in the huddle with, like for the Bulls what you'd be saying? I mean, you'd be have a, you'd have a team talk within a team, though, wouldn't you? The lads don't care about us. They've they've left us here to die. No one gives us a chance. Uh, not even our own club gives us a chance, which is why we're here and not the good players. Let's show everyone. Yeah, I mean, or, that's where you go. That's or let's put, let's put up this article with EPCR saying that, that they've accused us of throwing in the towel. Hundred yeah. we'll percent. This is exactly what they've done. Plenty of plenty of other journalists. I, I kind of wish it. They'd, no, I don't wish that they'd win because then the other players would get the the, the cowardly players that stayed at home. Who then get the credit <laughs> of playing. Of You're playing a deliberately provocative. Now, right? well, well, they would, wouldn't they? Oh, look, we made a semi final. No, you didn't. You coward. You stayed at home. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They did. They didn't play brilliant in the first half, but they stayed in the fight, and then it just 
all got away from them remarkably quickly in the second half. Well, there does seem to be a little bit of a, um, a trend in this because every game other than the Harlequins game, which was an absolute ding-dong from start to finish, seemed to be relatively competitive up until uh, half-time. Uh, half time. When yeah. one team breaks, they really break. Yeah. that That is the story of the weekend, actually. Just the, the sheer number of points that were scored on La Rochelle, um, Bulls and Exeter once they broke. It yeah. was then a free for a feeding frenzy. Yeah. And this could be down to inexperience because Bulls, inexperienced team and inexperienced in, in this competition. And Exeter, a very inexperienced team. La Rochelle, um, though. Yeah. They, they are not inexperienced. But, you, know, you, you can't expect to travel like that. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's inhumane. That, it's that, inhumane level. That, that was as good as I've seen Leinster play. We can come on to that in a minute. But yeah, yeah. North, Northampton, yeah. It, it's hard to judge. But from what I saw, just awesome attack. The, it's, it's so good to watch. It, it was good having Austin Healy um, in comms on this. He was very good. Because he was, he was picking he up is. things. Yeah, mm. as he always is. But he sees particularly the backline moves slightly differently and some of the pointers like the repeat plays with different outcomes which I particularly like he he talked about that with Vesti and then you had the uh, 9 to 10 or 12 because it's different with 9 looping around the back and then you either have the Mm. the inside or the outside option and running identical plays multiple times and hitting different men and sometimes it gets red sometimes it creates beautiful tries yeah I'm not sure I like Freeman playing at 13. He's awesome. It allows you to get just more speedsters on the pitch in one Uh, one regard. Well, there is this, but it just clouds the England picture some more, doesn't it? Because England do not need another 13. They need clarity on the wings. Yeah, I I think they've got that on the wings. I think Freeman and Faye were both so... Are the two boys. They're they're one and two on the wings, 11 and 14, if you will. I think you just kind of... It crystallised like English rugby. Like it's interesting. Well, actually, English and Irish rugby versus French. When you look at Leinster, Northampton, Toulouse, the best attacking teams in their respective countries, and the way you just described Northampton, they they have shapes and patterns that they run, and they can hit different options. Yes, and you put the you put the decision in making in Finn Smith's hands, and he's getting better and better. Yeah, and, and Mitchell's hands and as Mitchell well. And Mitchell as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. But it's based around structure. If there's always a structure, there's always a shape, and it's and I think Leinster are exactly the same. Mm, very much so. Very, very, very much intricate. So. It's always a shape, always a structure. Yeah, they might hit different options. They might change it up. They might have a surprise every now and again. Whereas to lose what. It's very different. They just kind of, I think they're they're much more in the moment and um, reactive. They actually just react to what is in front of them. When the picture changes, what they do changes. Yeah, there was and a, they just kind of, it's just kind of random genius. Well, there was yeah. There, well, it's probably not random. There's probably no, a lot no, of coaching genius. goes into it. But just yeah, genius. it's just there was um, a description of French rugby versus the rest of the world's rugby. I'm sure it was from one of the guests on Rugby Dungeon many years ago who described it as um, most other nations, so England, Ireland, I um, think it Wales, was Benjamin Kayser. Might have been Kayser. Benjamin Kayser. Um, South Africa particularly. They they see rugby as a science, whereas French see rugby as an art. Yeah, it was ben- ben- Benjamin Kayser. And Kayser's it was in part talking about the strength and conditioning or historic kind of lack of it in, in France, which obviously they've... they've very much got Hang over on, that. Was yeah. this the same interview as people? Someone was saying something about the musculature in French, in the French public in particular, is not as defined as in the British public because gym culture has not taken over, and they led on to talk about the rugby. I don't. F- it's not gym culture. It's led by the art of rugby, not the science of rugby. There's definitely that phrasing, but I can't. Yeah. Remember, I can't recall the comparisons with the uh, civilians. It might have been better. So, uh, some French teams are much more structured than others. And, and Bordeaux, when they're playing their best yeah. stuff, some of their backs moves are... Now, they they can do both. They can do both. When yeah. they were playing their, yeah. their best stuff, which yesterday they were not. And Toulouse have shapes and structures that they go to at times, but they're at their very best when they all just react to what's happening. And what's what's frightening about them? Sorry, because this no, is about North. Because it's about Northampton. Yeah. I'm just, it's just quite mm. interesting the way you describe Northampton. You're absolutely right. What's What's... What I think what Toulouse uniquely do is when they make a line break, 
it's just that they just flood it and all of a sudden it's a yeah. four it's a four on one how many times do you see a support runner just take an easy pass um, past the fullback to gas run in under the post mm. it's uh, it's amazing but northampton yeah the 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 structure and so i think with the players that they've got maybe they can be the english team that will bust out of that english mold and mm. actually well, i think they're all because it's a young team there. as well i mean if you watch mitchell play He'll ha- he'll happily pick up the ball from the base of a ruck and run up and down the line looking for a gap. You're I'm absolutely right about that's him. That's a weird thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and there's a break he made Straight second right. half on the on the blinds on yes. narrow blind side. Yeah, it actually came to nothing in the end. Yeah. but it was one of those where you're like, what on earth is he doing here? Oh, that's what he's yeah. <laughs> that's what he's doing. Yeah, you're right. Actually, mm. well, not to quote Jack Jacko Willink uh, anytime soon, but discipline will set you free, and I think that's exactly what happens with structure. It's a structure. That Do you know another phrase from the Marines that was quite handy in CrossFit? Uh, what is it? Um, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Yes, is that from the Marines? I think it's from the Marines. Yeah, oh, I use that all the time. That's good. I like that. Yeah, it's very, very, very true. Mm. So well done, Northampton. Uh, actually, one. Positive thing that we have we've commented on this at previous times this season as a market change in Northampton from previous seasons. Their scrum was very good. About to mention Manny Ayogan, Ayogan and Trevor Davidson and the reserves who came and Waller obviously very experienced, but they were they were putting all uh, bulls under all sorts of pressure. Davidson Collier, what what are England what were England worrying about with their tight head props? Exactly, exactly. Davidson's well, what, been great, hasn't he? What have they been doing for the last few years? <laughs> I, 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 I don't, mm. Oh, I, I believe. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah. So just back to Collier. Allegedly, oh, I need to, I need to, remind, uh, to remember to talk about this. Um, uh, allegedly, Rountree was after him for years, but something just wasn't quite right. I blame, and I know I'm a, a historically an Eddie Jones fan. I blame Eddie Jones mm. because he went for the... So it is undeniable that Kyle Sinclair has a better all-round skill set yeah. than Will Collier or Dan Cole... Yeah. Or Trevor Davidson, yeah. or Paul Hill, who looked in good shape when he came on. Mm. Any of those boys, bigger bodied boys. Uh, and Sinclair England spent a lot of caps and a lot of time on Sinclair, who he's, perhaps he's wasn't disappearing quite, th- this year. Yeah, he wasn't quite good enough at his primary. He's undoubtedly better around the park, cutting lines, handling yeah. out the back. He's more. But he's his def- primary job wasn't quite as good as any of those other boys. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of like yeah, you, you're absolutely right. He is more rounded, but on the same token, I don't want my accountant to know poetry. I yeah, just want yeah, him to count. I don't want my tight head prop more rounded. I want my tight head prop more rounded. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Which, yeah, which, return of, which is the return of Dan Cole. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Manny Hogan's been, been great. Um, is it Heffernan, the reserve that they've got? Not reserve, but the... Oshan. Oshan. Oshan Heffernan. Heffernan, who's very good. So to be keeping him out of the team, I think, is impressive. Mm. And you know, front rows actually, both Northampton and Quinns, a lot of for all the free flowing rugby which we're crediting them for, which is undoubtedly something which has happened. Tired of ads interfering with your favorite sports podcasts? Good news: ad free listening is available on Amazon Music for all the music plus top podcasts included with your Prime membership. Stay ahead of the game by downloading the Amazon Music app for free. Or go to amazon.com slash sports ad free. That's amazon.com slash sports ad free to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. A lot can happen in three years. Like a chatbot may be your new best friend. But what won't change? Needing health insurance. United Healthcare Tri Term Medical Plans, underwritten by Golden Rule Insurance Company, offer flexible, budget friendly coverage that lasts nearly three years in some states. Learn more at uh1.com. It's the front rows that have really stood up. We'll go through oh. that too. Alex Coles is playing really well as well. Alex Coles, brilliant. Yeah. Um, my boy Langdon, absolutely yeah. nailing his. He's looking great. Nailing yeah. his line out throws now. He's he is looking good. Big He's cool. great, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I told I told him at the time this boy is great. This boy is great. Fifty cap international. Yeah, but no one listened. No one listened. Yeah. We can let him go. No, they, you can't. They were class. And they've got Furbank to come back and. Well, James Ram looks all right. He looks, he looks good. Yeah, well, yeah. Furbank and Ludlum both came off the bench, didn't they? Crikey. Which is this is it. I mean, coming well, and this is... Pearson not even involved because he was in, he's injured. Yeah. It's got to be the Northampton. This is their year. Yeah, it's their opportunity to win it, isn't it? It is. This is their With Laws and Ludlum there. One last hurrah. Yeah. But then some of the other guys will only be getting better. Like Yogan and Smith. Are they missing? Are they going to lose Moon? Freeman, is it Moon? Slightly yeah, old. Moon's going to buy on. 
Yeah, my, okay. belo- my beloved Bayern. And Waller's retiring. Yeah, okay. So, so yeah. yeah, I think this is their window of opportunity. They've got to win now. Definitely. Shall we talk about Leinster? Because we, yeah. we were talking about free-flowing, but that, structured rugby. That's Leinstertainment. I'll tell you what, that was good. Leinstertainment, very good. Um, they were good. They were really good. That was as good as I've seen them. And I thought, in the first half, where they butchered a couple of tries, uh, where James Lowe gets held up by... Was it? it might have been Hastoy from three yards out. Yeah, it was. Uh, and you think, maybe maybe it's going to be lightning striking twice. They get a dangerous amount of, what was it, 13 or 14? Or 17, 17 points, points up at points, one point, point much like last year. And then, yeah. and then, dangerous lead, and then La Rochelle points. immediately scored. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, this is actually quite easy for me to work out. Otherwise, this could have been a nightmare. So my nightmare scenario is that Russing are still in the competition going into semis and also Leinster are going in, <laughs> into the semis. This would just be this would be mind blowingly poor. Um <laughs> Leinster getting to semis now post Lancaster, as I mentioned before, is 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 kind of a big deal. Um and it's just which storyline do I like more? Leinster being bottlers, which I would like which I'd like to keep for a couple more years go- uh, going, <laughs> or Lancaster being Dreadful at his job. One of those two things. <laughs> uh, I can have both of them great, but I think I think I prefer um, Leinster not to go any further. And I just don't know how you beat them because you're right, Tim. They looked sensational. I can't think of unless you have another version of Leinster who's slightly better. Now, the two English teams travel away. Um, Harlequins travel to Toulouse. Northampton travel to Leinster. Croke Park. Yeah, yes. Is it? Yeah. Brook Park. Wow. There hasn't been a rugby game there since 2007. Yeah, that's exciting. That's cool. Not great for TV, though. Too far away from the pitch. Mm. So, because of the dimensions of Gaelic football or whatever other sport that they play there. Um, what, the Gaelic sports? It's is the, it? It's the home of GAA. Right, there you go. Then That the, that, that thing they do. Um the crowd is very far back, so you've got these massive uh, touch, these massive t- touch lines. So on TV, it does look a bit funny. I, I, when that England game happened, that was 2007, yeah. wasn't it? But I think it's a sense of history which really carried oh, that through. Oh, well, it was the fact that uh, people got killed uh, at the by the hill by, something uh, hill 16. Yeah, by the was it is it called hill 16 because 16 people died? Yeah, 16 people were killed, and it was at the was it the orders of the kings. Horses or something like that. No idea. A long time. I think it was something like that. There, there was there were soldiers on on horseback. Uh, there. I'm not really. Cool. They're under or- orders by the king. I think. So it's a ve- like the 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 um and also uh, the because it was an English sport and not an Irish uh, rugby's an English sport. There was it was decreed like there no English sport will ever be played. Yeah, there are at this ground. There are very few subjects that I'm not willing to touch. Irish history is one of them. I just don't get. I just don't talk about it. I, I don't think about it. I don't <laughs> co- com- co- comment on it. Whatever they say, yeah, fine. I will. I I will take that. Which is why it's uh, historic that well, we, they played there. Yeah. But for TV, it's not a great venue. Okay. Um, here's a little bit of Irish history that you might comment on. You just mentioned Ireland versus England, 2007, Croke Park. Yep. Give me the England team. Uh. Yeah, that was so, the, so the, I'll tell you the score line. Actually, was it it, 2007. Did you say? 2007. It was a historic victory for Ireland, 43-13, a 30-point victory, marking England's worst defeat in the tournament up to that point. So basically, who was I'm thinking? Who would have been in the Six Martin Nations Corey. 2007? So Martin Curry started what position? Second row, eight, um, number eight. Oh damn it! Did start number eight. It's trying to be a bit. Phil Vickery. Uh, Phil Vickery started. Steve Steve Borthwick, not in the 22. Andrew Sheridan. Not in the 22. Mm. So, Martin Corey, Lewis Moody. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No, okay. Not in the 22. One of the Sanderson boys. None of the Sanderson this is, boys. This, this is embarrassing. What's going on here? Sean Perry. No. Uh, yes. Well done. <laughs> yeah, it's reserve scrum half. Great Wearing the number twenty to. shirt. Oh, well, that, so Matt, uh, no, Matt Dawson was no, still around. No, then, was he? Andy Gummersell. No. Oh. Um, okay. Not Richard Wigglesworth. No, he was no. too young then. Yeah, he might have. He, he won it because he played in two thousand five. Peter when won Richards. It, Peter Richards. No. Charlie Hodgson. Uh, 
Charlie Hodgson, no. Oh, 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 oh. Ellis, scrum off. Harry Ellis. Harry, Harry Ellis. Ellis. Nice, well yeah. played. There we go. All okay. right, so then... So we're missing quite a few. Josh Lucy, was he still around? No. Josh Lucy, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He was on the right wing. So there's a chance then Jason Robinson would, would be in there. He wasn't in there, but yeah, there was a chance because this is the World Cup year. This yeah. Six months before the World so, Cup. Hang on, let's all settle down a second. <laughs> so, oh, Mark, Tindall. Mark Cueto. Cueto, no. Ollie Barkley. Ollie Barkley, No. It's not my cat. So do we, you did say Tyndall, didn't you? Tyndall, yeah. Tyndall playing thirteen. This is a big centre partnership. Oh, Jamie Noon. No, bigger. Andy Farrell. Correct. Wow, wow. Okay. interesting. Andy Farrell. Andy Farrell. So, so who's but, a fly? So Mike Cat played fly half. Ollie Barkley played fly half. So it wasn't Johnny like, Wilkinson also played fly half. Johnny Wilkinson did play fly half. Yes. He so Johnny Wilkinson. Uh, Andy Farrell, Mike Tyndall. That's yep. pretty pretty meaty, that. Yeah. With Josh right. Lucy on, on wing or fullback? Josh Lucy on the right wing. Okay. And not Mark Cueto, left wing. Oh, um, oh, oh, Paul Saki. Not Paul Saki. Hugo? Not Hugo. No. This is before the This is the, la- the, the other two in the... Um, oh, Matthew Tate. Matthew Tate was number 22. Okay. Hang on, 2007. Okay. So the, the other two... Ben Cohen? No. The other two in the back three are tough to get. We might be better moving on to... No, we are not moving on. (laughs) James James Simpson, Daniel. No. Um, Um, Uh, Leslie Vinacolo. No. Good Good one. Good. (laughs) Uh, No, not him. I'm just trying to think of the wingers in the Premiership at about that time. I'm I'm thinking second rows now. You go for second rows. You go for second rows. I'll put up some wingers. Benke. Oh, um... No. Tom Voice, no. Chris, <sighs> Chris Jones, no. Uh, Steve uh, Balthwick, no. Already had him, but no. Deacon, Deacon. Which one? Lewis. Lewis Deacon. Yeah, second not. row. Good so one. One of the sec. One of the th- three second rows. Cause Simon Shaw, much. not Simon Shaw. Although he did play in the World Cup that year, didn't yeah. he? Tom Palmer. Tom Palmer was on yes. the bench. Very good, mate. Ah. Good shout. So Tom, so you, yeah. You need two of the back rows. You need the Hooker. other starting. Lee Mears. Row. Lee Mears was on the bench. Uh, the other start. We've not. We've Matt Stevens. No. Are we missing a starting second row? You're missing a starting second row. You're missing Deacon and two props. Tom Palmer. Oh, Tom Palmer's on the bench, right? Tom Palmer's on the bench. Yeah. Perry Freshwater. Perry Freshwater started loose head prop. <laughs> Good oh, shout. Yeah. Good shout. So you're not missing that many now. Uh, in no. the pack, you're missing six and seven. Um, okay, Michael Lippman. No. Um, six and seven. Missing. Six and seven. Okay, it's not Lewis Moody. It's not... Uh, crikey. This is, is it obvious? Will we, will we kick ourselves with some of these Six, things? six you, you will kick. Joe Worsley. Joe Worsley. Oh, uh, yeah. Joe Worsley. Yeah, Delalio played in the World Cup, didn't he? But yeah, he did. He's not, not playing here. Seven. Um... We've spoken about his brother recently, actually. Ah, his, his less famous brother. Although we probably talk about his brother more on the podcast. Crikey, who's... It's not... Uh, we've done Sanderson, so it's not him. Not him. Not Pat Sanderson. His brother was a second row. Tom Wood. No, his brother was a second row. Um, Will Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> his brother is less famous. <laughs> His brother's a second row. Yeah, we spoke about him about three weeks ago when Tim was in France. Three or four weeks ago. Huh? Oh, Magnus Lund. Magnus Lund. Oh, yeah, because I had dinner with Eric Lund. Yeah. yeah. The other second row you're missing at Classics, English second row. Oh, um, hang on. Oh, we've got Tom Palmer ben and... Not Ben Kate. No. Uh, Grucock. Hard, man. Yeah, Grucock. Danny Grucock. Danny Grucock. And... You're missing the starting hooker. The starting hooker. And uh, not Steve, so Steve Thompson was injured at, at this point. Thompson and the yeah. scrum half were missing as well, aren't we? You know, you've got the two scrum half, Sean Perry and Harry Ellis. Oh, okay, you're missing yeah, right. the eleven the and the fifteen. Eleven. If Phil Greening, it's not too late for Phil Greening, is it? It is too late for Phil Greening. Richard Cockrell, not Richard no. Cockrell. Similar, similar club. Oh, um, Dorian West, not Dorian West. Well, same club as Cockrell. Uh, George Shooter, yes. Ah, and reserve uh, reserve prop is the same club again. Jason uh, Jason White, 
No, not Jason White. What's yeah, yeah Jason Julian, White. Julian, Julian White. White. Julian White, yeah. Jason, Jason White's the, 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 Jason White's the flanker for Scotland, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you're missing the... Uh, so the reserve fly half. 11. Oh, Toby Flood. Toby Flood. Tao Lupe Flood. The reserve flanker who was at one point the great hope of English rugby. <laughs> oh, uh, Tom right, Reece. yeah, Tom Rees. Tom Rees. And you're missing the two... Um, 11 and 15. 11 and 15. Ian Bolshaw. No. Okay. Okay. Dan, Dan Luger. No, he wasn't. Dan Luger. Dan Luger, Luger Dan Scarborough. No and no. Uh, oh, Chris Patton. No, Chris Patton only had one cup at, and it was against Barbarians. So it's not him. Um, so one of these... No, no, no. One of these guys only had two caps. Okay. Um, one of them got four. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> the fullback from Gloucester at the time. What the hell was his name? Ah, uh, there's a fullback from Gloucester. <laughs> it's going to kill me. There was a fullback from there Gloucester. There was a fullback from Gloucester. And there was a fullback from Gloucester. Give me his first name. Um, <laughs> JB knew him. No, 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 no. Don't, don't actually. Uh, don't. Don't tell me his first name. What the hell was his name? Not Forrester. Forster. Foster. Foster. No, Forster. No, what was his name? <laughs> <laughs> the other one is easier. The other one got 14 okay, so, caps so, for England. 14. 14, the other one. All right, so we've got the Very fullback talented from Gloucester who are coming. James, James Forrester. James, no, that's no, the he's number eight. Yeah. James Forrester. James, oh, for God's sake. No. You're thinking of Jack Forster. Prop. No, I'm not thinking of him. He's also played for Gloucester. I, I'm thinking of Narraway now. It's not him, obviously. <laughs> Dad's a butcher. Dad's a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, this is going to absolutely eat me alive. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, to get your juices flowing, tell us what club. So the other the winger. winger. So you, you've got you know the fullbacks from Gloucester. Yeah. The M- other winger, Miles Benjamin, played no. for multiple <laughs> clubs and won. He won, uh, won a lot. Marlon Yard. No. Nope. Um, Marlon Yard didn't win before, much before before oh, Marlon yeah, Yard's yeah, yeah, time. Is, isn't it? Although he did play for. He Quins. has got some accolades though, but he hasn't won much. <laughs> he did play for Quinns, but he's more. I think he's more famous for the club he went to after Quinns. Chris Ashton. No. Nope. Oh. Um, but he did play with Chris Ashton. Ah, oh, what? And he... Was not, uh, I can tell there'll be people shouting at the, yeah, <laughs> shouting yeah. at the podcast now. He I apologise. in this part of the world as well. He went to Lim High School. David Strettle. 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 Strett. Yeah, he won loads. And he, yeah. Went to Claremont. With, oh, uh, did he end up in Saracens? With Benders. Saracens, yeah. he was yeah. in Saracens. In two yeah. stints in Saracens. Yeah, two right, stints no, Saracens. who is his fullback? So fullback, two caps for England. James, uh, 131 appearances for Gloucester. Narrow between no. 2004 I know exactly who it is. and he's 2013. Tall. I, I, he I, is. He's tall, like six foot three. Yeah, pretty rangy. Oh, I can I can see him. And do you know why I can see him as well? Because we had an article written about us in one of the papers, and it was him. Uh, his picture was. Above it, I can't remember what the hell his name was. An article written about us? Yeah, like a podcast that you should listen to. Oh, it, m- uh. it might have been. <laughs> was it a different fullback? No, I think, it, I think it is the same fullback. Gloucester, he was a one-club man that never played anywhere else. Played uh, with Simpson, played in that era with Simpson. Yeah, I know. Oh, you have to tell me. James, hold on, I'm going to find, I'm just going to... Oh, yes, you'll totally kick yourself. I think he's a teacher now. Is it James someone? He got injured. Um, he got injured, and I think he became a teacher. And he had yeah, kind yeah. of... Director of sport, yeah. Cheltenham College. Cheltenham College. He had, he had a, a slightly receding hairline. Yeah, blondish hair. And, and wasn't letting it go. He didn't go and There wasn't... Turkey hair wasn't a thing at that point. <laughs> and he, did, he didn't go... He didn't shave it off. So, um I can't remember what his first name. What's his first name? J- I want to say it's James. It's no, not James. It's not James. It's like not. I can't remember his first name, but I, I, I've looked it up and I know the surname. Is it Forstall? No, no. It's, it's not an F. Oh God! His What's initials his... are O M. Oh, shares shares a last name with a famous Ol- Gloucester number eight. Ollie. Say it. O- Ollie Morgan. Yes. yes. Is it? Oh. Correct. <laughs> so we use that to distract us from uh, the uh, potentially devastating nature of Irish politics. Yes, or well Irish done. history. Well done. <laughs> there we go. Holly Morgan. Oh, kill me. <laughs> um, 
in the game, we've not really touched on Toulouse Exeter. Um, Exeter should be very proud of that first half performance. But they just, a couple of times in the first half, and then many, many times in the second half, they just were found wanting out wide. They just, Toulouse managed to find yeah. so much space the, co- the context is important, as we've talked about before. Exeter are apparently £2.2 £2 million under the English salary cap, which is significantly below the French salary it's cap. About a third of the French <laughs> salary cap. Which Toulouse will be maxing out. Yes. And when you've got a team that w- w- we will... Blair Kinghorn's done his job for the day. Let's take him off and bring on Tom Ramos. Let's take off Piatto Malvacca and bring on Julian Marchand. It's uh, it's just unreal. Yeah, and you've bring got off an, Rory Arnold and bring on Thibaut Flamont. Whereas uh, who are we bringing on, Rob? Uh, Zach Wimbush, <laughs> last year's Exeter University centre. <laughs> it's incredible what they've done to get to the last eight in Europe. Is remarkable. It really is. And they should be very, very proud. And all those players will be better for that experience. Yeah. But for that performance, they need to be investigated by EPCR. No, <laughs> joking. <laughs> the fact that it was 17-16 at half time is amazing. Absolutely remarkable. But let's just talk about the way, way to lose attack. It's, it's just mesmerising, isn't it? Yeah. And it, it kind of, it almost doesn't matter where DuPont is standing and Intermac is standing. They just, much like... Um, Bordeaux did when they pushed Luku out to 10, although with far less success. They just kind of know how to play. And um, kind of like Ulster did with uh, Nathan Doak starting at fly half. Um, again, that was with much less less success than Toulouse. They're just so good. And then you've got like, you've got um, Costes in the centre, I oh, really like. He looks class, doesn't yeah. he? That little chicken wing offload out the back to Malia. And he put in some nice hits again hmm. um, and then obviously Peter Aki is dangerous obviously Labelle and Malia are phenomenally del- dangerous and then the the pack is just international after international after international and all playing phenomenal they are built the right way I, I know you don't want to see a Leinster to lose final but uh, yes I do <laughs> yes I do oh do you, oh, you do I thought oh, so it's, god it's, yeah it's funny because in the World Cup I, the one final I didn't want to see was South Africa New Zealand. Yeah. Because we've seen it. We know they're the best two teams. They've got all the... We've just seen it too many times. This, Leinster Toulouse, they are the best teams for a reason. They have got the most trophies for a reason. And they're both playing just about the top of their game. I tell you what, it would be hard for me to support a team more than I'd support Toulouse. <laughs> do you think this you could be gonna, the one You're just going to pick them as your team as well? Why don't you just do. pick them as your team as well? I don't like them. Oh, is it Phil? Is it your beloved Bordeaux? It's your my beloved blo- Bordeaux, my beloved Bayonne, and your beloved Toulouse. Just, mm, just own it, JB. Mm, just be it, a glory hunter. Just, do, just do it. <laughs> that really Outside is a glory sale, hunter. I don't really like supporting teams. Don't really like. I do. What about your beloved Benetton? Have you just ghosted them now? Yeah, I'm not bored. I do have to say though. Now that Dean Bud's retired, exactly. <laughs> so watching that game, that phenomenal game, Harlequins against Bordeaux, and I know I'm kind of notionally a Bordeaux fan. I found myself wanting Harlequins to win. Mm. Just because I know the players so much. We watch them week in, week out. We, we we are English rugby fans. There are many, many English rugby stars in that team. I feel a bit guilty for saying it, but I wanted Quins to win. Mm. Turncoat. <laughs> so, but, but fair. Well, uh, yeah, but fair. Can we just talk about J- uh, Jack Willis for a second? Because oh, uh, you, you already mentioned that the, the English Joe Marler tweeted that yeah. this, this this rule has to go. After and Bill Sweeney confirmed it will not J- go J- as B- part of uh, Yeah, Bill Sweeney confirmed it will not go. J- we, t- we talked about this last week and w- we made our points clear. It was interesting but that Joe Marler said that. But Jack Willis, what? I mean, that guy is... Great, isn't he? I wouldn't... I, I wouldn't... I don't... As an England fan, I'm completely torn because I love seeing him play for Toulouse. Mm. I, yeah. I want to see him play for England, but you want I, to see I, I also don't want to not see him playing for Toulouse. And he seems incredibly Toulousean, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, he does. He's got better. He has got yeah. better. Yeah. I love do when a player is good, but then you put him in a surrounding with other immense players and he just becomes world class. And that's just what's happened here. Like he, he fits in so well. He's highly, highly regarded. Well, yeah, it's awesome. I was thinking about that, um, that principle earlier in the weekend as well, because I was watching um, my other beloved team, Ulster, um, Battle combatively in the first half and then get absolutely smashed in the second half by Clement and specifically uh, Paselli Yato and Soa 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 Kula. Yeah, big those boys. two were 
phenomenal. Um, but I'm, I'm watching Stephen Kitsoff, double World Cup winner, um, player, one of the most important players on one of the best teams of all time, and kind of just looks average in, in that Ulster team. Mm. And it's sometimes it's the environment that you're in and the play, and sometimes just playing with lots and lots of the best players in the world makes you look really, really good. Well, let's just revisit this again in the context of Will Collier, because I think there's something interesting to be said here, which is maybe if you're just a component part of an excellent team, you can get away with just one thing, and that looks mm. like exactly what's happened with Kitsoff. Kitsoff. Maybe just England are not good enough to support the excellent ability of Will Collier scrimmaging with everything else. Because, you know, when you've got Peter Stafford toy and just name every, everybody See, else... Not him. Um, <laughs> Quagga Smith. Um, all the more than Annette Sabeth and Mosta. Yeah. You just need to push hard going and forward. And Maybe. Che, Marks, Mbalambi. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad, is it? Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. You just need to push hard. And maybe in Ulster, he needs to do things more than push hard, like hit rucks and carry ball and do things which... Uh, which he's... he can he can do all those things, but uh, compared to, say, Andrew Warwick or someone who's played the last few years who is on... I don't know, a third or a quarter of what Kiss... You aren't getting four X. He's, he's still a phenomenal player, but it's he's not enough of a difference maker to make it uh, well, he's a back good investment. South Africa, is he not? Yeah, he's going back to Stormers. Yeah. yeah. After one year. Christ, I bet. He never thought... I never never thought I'd hear those two compared. Andrew Warwick and Stephen Kitsoff. Kitsoff. <laughs> there you go. Number, number one jersey in... Uh, in Ulster. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the women and the balls that they're going to use? We need to talk about that. We also, I did just remember, there was a bit of news uh, that we not touched on, which was uh, TNT Sport. They've signed two deals recently that we've not spoken about. One was last week where they have signed up for the Autumn Internationals for two years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting and um, and good, I think. Um Although it's perhaps less accessible than Prime, because lots and lots of people have Prime, um, th- that was only two or three weeks after they. And the TNT app is unusable. Like literally for me, I can't use it. Well, I, u- I use it. Do you? Fine, yeah. I, well, we'll have to have a chat later about how you actually work the damn thing. BT Sport app was ace. The BT, BT Sport, Sport app was uh, good. Worked. TNT, so I use the Discovery Plus app. Mm. So the. Yeah. You, you have to use the Discovery Plus app, which you just sign in with your TNT account. Yeah, I don't even know my, what my you know, details the, are. The one thing, there was one thing that, that pulls those two stories you just mentioned. You're right to say the broadcasting. Was there something well, else you were yeah, going to mention? Because yeah, because three weeks ago or four weeks ago, to virtually no fanfare, there was an announcement that TNT Sport have extended their premiership rugby deal, their TV deal for that. It's showing more games. Every game. Every game. Uh, but no announcement on numbers, on what it's worth, which... To me, I can only assume that it is a drop in flat or flat or down. Yeah, yeah because they there wasn't any competition. Unlike when France, uh, when the French TV deal in France was announced two or three years ago, and there were three broadcasters competing for it, so they got a twenty, thirty percent increase. I'd be surprised there there might have been someone willing to uh, like Sky or. Maybe not even Sky. I can't see Some, Sky being interested. Yeah, someone might have got it if it was a steal, but um, it was TNT's. Do you think they're saving their their war chest for when the women's rights come up? <laughs> but that is, M- meanwhile, that the, is the French TV deal uh, it, with Canal Plus is going to break the 500 million euro barrier. Brilliant. They are just trending in different directions at yeah. the moment. Yeah. One is going up. So I made this part on an economics podcast with Mark Evans, which is, um, oh, actually, I didn't make this point. It's the point I wanted to make, sorry, which is the French League is not competing with the English League anymore. It's competing with international rugby. You have made that on this podcast, though. Yeah. Um, not economics, maybe, yet. And, you know, as soon as it gets big enough to make international rugby not worth it, you know, we're going to see... Which is where the Champions League... Is exactly to a degree, exactly where it but is. I Tim. don't think the French league will get there. It's where it's where the English Premier League is as well. But it's getting there. I mean, the first guy to think about it was Carl Heyman. So it has been in the zeitgeist of rugby players for a little while. I think it's just going to get more and more uh, prevalent now. It's certainly in the thoughts of those guys who are not nailed on to being to, to be England starters. 
I don't think Jack Willis would give up his position now. Don't think um, quite a few of them who've made that trip over the channel would come back on the off chance they get selected or on a, or on a coin flip. Why would you? Mm. But the one thing that ties those two things together that you mentioned about the TV deal, uh, the autumn nations, and also what you talked about with the the, the suggestion that the women uh, that women's in elite players or just with adult women play with a size four and a half ball, a new size to reflect the fact they are, have small hands. Mm-hmm. The two thi- the thing that ties those two things together was the response from, well, certainly people online yep. uh, in rugby, which is just to, it's almost like there's like a, a default whinge. <laughs> default victim. Def- default victim, default whinge. I don't know, it's the, the TV deal one, I don't understand the whinge. Well, I didn't hear any, what was the whinge about the TV deal one? So oh, now, now we can't play it. Now, now I'm not going to be able to watch it because it's £30 a month, which I get. No, I don't get I, it. I, hey, right, I'm, I'm well, sick of this. We need free to, we, we have to have free-to-air for the Autumn Nations, otherwise the game won't grow. Yeah, I'm sick That's of this. I mean, uh, well, cause you, as we always say, uh, with any discussion like this, uh, it's not free because the licence fee is £160 <laughs> a year, which is how much is that a month? Uh, uh, 15 quid a month. Yeah, yeah. So half the cost of TNT Sport. Month. Yeah, and I actually want to watch TNT Sport. Well, sometimes. I want to sometimes. watch the, the actual content of the sport. I have no interest in what happens either side of it. There we go. Um, right, well, yeah. So I'm sick of this attitude that everything should be free, um, which is so prevalent in 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 rugby. I, I think that's like that's the thing. Someone someone was whinging the other day about the season ticket price of... No, the, yeah, the, like the, the ticket price of Bath. Yeah, Bath ticket price against Bath. who was it? Was Bath, it Northampton? Bath against Northampton. Yeah. The game, yeah. the game coming up, and the, the only tickets available were one hundred and fourteen pounds. Good. The only, t- yeah, the only that's ticket, good. That's brilliant. The only tickets it? left. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, as an economist would point out, it's high. You should be happy that it's high because now you get the chance to go. If it was low, you wouldn't have a ticket. So don't whinge. And also, Bath have struggled for how long to build a stadium? Building a stadium is a hell of a lot more expensive than £140 per ticket. So I understand the sentiment of the people that complain about the price of that ticket. They're losers. Because they're, because they're, but the argument that that is stopping rugby from growing because you can't reach another demographic, as you just said, if the tickets were cheap, the tickets would instantly sell out mm. and... Yeah, but if they would, if they were cheap, they wouldn't though, because you've got to you've got to put pitch it at a point that is yeah. you're going to sell out like last minute. Well, yeah, no, no, quite. So the games would sell out, and Bath would would have l- more debt on well, their balance sheet. Sale sale tickets are cheap, and sale tickets are cheap. You, you exactly, they can never sell out. So yeah. it's, it, the market dictates what tickets are worth, not exactly. not individuals on Reddit and Twitter. Exactly, I can never see Bath again. Okay, fine, don't. You know, Crummy River. Um, watch on TV. You know, pay your thirty pound a month for thirty pound a month. You can watch mul- uh, multiple uh, game- games of rugby on on TNT. It's this idea that everything should be free, and I hate it in in rugby because what you effectively have. I, me and Tim spoke about this on the on the Patreon. Is this? I see it literally on a daily basis or weekly basis when I go to my rugby club. You have the rugby club where we pay our match fees and we pay our month. A monthly subs because it's a point of pride that you pay for, that you play for for your rugby club and you contribute to it. Now, if you're unable to do so on an individual basis, we will accommodate that because that's what mates do and that's what clubs do. They're there to support each other, but they're only there to support each other because the, everyone else con- the, everyone else co- co- contributes. It's like a group decision. In a same in the same building is the football team, which think that all the funding that they have should never should sorry should always go to just providing sport and therefore their players never never pay because they never pay they never have any investment or any skin in the game of showing up every every week they struggle like mad so you might get five teams out because football's an easy game to play but constantly with different lads right and then on the far end of this scale it's something like crossfit i pay Oh, as you know, Tim, a lot of money for CrossFit, mm-hmm. but because you pay a lot of money, you you you're then, bought in. You bought in. You you go and buy the shoes. You're you committed. You, you, you yeah. show up five times, nine times um, a week. You know that like that's what you do. Rugby shouldn't necessarily be free. I was talking to um, someone who runs a rugby club in the Midlands. No surprise who that might be. Mm. 
And he made the same point that everyone is win- is whinging at them, like, where's our money? What are you going to do for us? Like, do it yourself. And this balls argument. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's talk women. about that. So the, the yeah. suggestion of creating a new size ball, four and a half, for adult women to play with. Yes. So <laughs> I saw some accusations flying around, like, well, it's hard enough for women to get rugby balls as it is, but size four and a half balls in developing markets will, get this quote, prevent access. Now, what they mean is it's going to be a bit more, bit more expensive. But if a group of women... Well, more expensive initially, only on the first round of balls, every time after that it's the same cost that getting balls would be any other year. Well, no, 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 Tim, you didn't listen to what I said. They've been denied access. They don't have access, whatever that means, right? What, what, what do you play with normally? Well, uh, oh, we play with the men. No, most women's teams yeah. will have a bag of their own balls. Ex- yeah, they don't get. They don't just like. Please, can we have a ball to play with tonight? Yeah, so no, it, and you may not have porridge either. Like it's nonsense. So isn't we can it? bring like, it in in two years' time. In which case, by by it, with you know, or a year's time, by you're gonna at some point in every team's lifespan, you buy new balls but, to play with. Yeah, but what about this, Tim? Like, if you have say fifteen, uh, let's just say a, 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 you know, twenty-three. Uh, women form a club they want to play and between the, all of them they can't be bothered to buy a ball I don't think they should play <laughs> right and furthermore if the local community don't think they're important enough to fund a ball maybe if the community d- 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 doesn't want to pay for your rugby and you don't want to pay for your rugby you don't play rugby that, that would be my that would be my suggestion the idea that a size four and a half ball is in any way a barrier to access or reduced access to rugby is not. You, you've bothered building a field, I, um, uh, I see, and erecting two pitch, uh, two posts. But sourcing a size four point five ball that is beyond the pale. You you simply can't do it. And also, if there were some short term cash flow issues, which meant you couldn't purchase what a rugby ball or a bag of rugby balls, then I'm sure that there would be, you know... <laughs> Just think about it. I, I would think at, at, the, at the top level that the balls would be supplied. Yeah. And at lower community levels, I'm sure people wouldn't uh, mind. Today, we've only got a size five balls. Is that OK? Yeah, of course. Uh, but, the, the, the level of victimhood that was brought into the responses to this story, it was just astounding. Yeah, and then someone says, why don't you cover women's rugby? Because of this. Because of this. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is why... Well, actually, that, that, well, that, that's not why from my perspective. But, yeah, no, it was Squidge. It was Squidge himself who called us out and said we should, we should uh, use our platform, quote-unquote, we should use our platform to cover women's rugby. Now, from time to time, we do. I don't. And the point being... I do with size four balls, because finally they're are, making some good decisions. Well, this is my perspective. There are, there are X amount of hours in the day. I have children. I have work yeah i have other commitments i love my rugby but there are so many hours in the day at the point when i've watched every bit of rugby from the competitions that i already love mm. and i have nothing to do then i yeah th- then i will consider maybe watching something else and commenting on that no i don't mm. think i would i i i occasionally yeah maybe watch world cup a, final watch maybe. A, yeah watch have you watched any of the six nations no i've not actually this I, year. I haven't because, either because there's been so much rugby on yeah because it, it's never come to a time when i Oh, there's no. I would normally now be watching rugby. There's no rugby, therefore I'll look for some alternative rugby. Like for example, on Friday night I watched the Gloucester or some of the Gloucester Ospreys game. Yeah. Um, on Saturday morning I watched some of my beloved Hurricanes batter the Chiefs. Great game. Um, I even watched a little bit of the. Oh, I can't remember which one I've watched so much rugby. Was it Rebels versus Pacifica? Anyway. I'll watch it if it's on and it's accessible. It's not been on at the time when I've not w- been watching anything else. Are you saying you've been denied access to women's rugby? Maybe that is what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, deli- I would. I would. It's not to not. I'm, so it's not knocking the sport. It's just I'm. I'm, I'm knocking the <laughs> notion want, yeah. from 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 Squidge that we we are compelled. We should be compelled to use our platform. That was the phrase used. Now I know. Use you was, our platform. Yeah, this is Tim again. It, it, uh, YouTube beef now, YouTube rivals. No, not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. He's very so good that, at YouTube. I just, I, 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 have, I take umbrage with that no, no, phrase look, uh, look, and the suggestion we, that we're abandoning our post by no, no, <laughs> by having a podcast I, where we where we talk about the games that we have. I seen. am in no way abandoning my post. My post is to watch men's rugby and talk to my mates about it on Sunday. That is my post. Right? <laughs> there is no abandonment of any. I've been fairly consistent for eleven years on this point. Uh, <laughs> I would, I would say this though. Why do I? deserve the plaudits and possibly the benefits from exploiting the world's most valuable sporting <laughs> investment opportunity. 
I am doing a moral service, much like apparently it's a moral service that women must be promoted to play rugby. I am doing an equally moral <laughs> service by leaving it alone. Because if I did get involved, I'd probably dominate that market as as, um, as well. <laughs> so, so, well Squid, Squidge's <laughs> argument is we're, we're compelled to use our platform to talk about women's no. rugby because it's the only part of the sport that's growing. And so to your if, point, yeah. to your point, imagine how screwed rugby would be if people like us just hopped on hopped off men's rugby oh it's, not, it's having a tough time let's let's sack it let's jack it yeah yeah let's talk about the only bit that is growing I mean if you're asking me to do it right if you're asking me to talk about women's rugby it is broken right because I'm not interested my argument would be let people who are interested do it because they'll do a damn sight better job than I would I'm not even interested in the URC I'm barely interested in the in the Challenge Cup like I'm just not interested right and there is no problem with not being interested in a certain aspect there's, there's of There's lots rugby. of things I'm not interested in. I haven't watched any of the Masters this weekend. The golf. Same. No, I know. Same. I've not watched any F1. It, 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 I just have. Yeah, and that, do, do you think it's some sort of moral... There's a moral imperative that you should do it is bizarre. Whereas whereas but, in two weekends' time, Lancashire Cup final, I guarantee <laughs> I'll be talking about the Broughton Park under-16s A lot uh, more match, than, a lot, yeah. A lot more than the Premier 15s. Well, uh, because that's a game that I will have actually watched. Exactly. Look, the, the beautiful thing about rugby is, and this applies to women's rugby as well, if you like that form of the game, it exists for you yeah. and embrace it. Brilliant. And if you want to talk about it with your three mates, I will talk about your podcast and tell you where to go. And on that note, I will say, if you want to find out some great analysis on women's rugby, look up a squidge. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Absolutely. He, he does it yeah. really, really 100%. well. Let him, 100%. Let him profit from the undoubtedly most profitable... Uh, <laughs> uh, what was it? The most profitable investment opportunity the sport has ever seen. Well, there is. So I, we got sent uh, in one of our WhatsApp groups um, a post by Elmer Smith, uh, presenter, <laughs> broadcaster. Um, now, just good, look, good presenter. Good, really very good, good talented really good presenter. presenter. Definitely. Not she's, a great thinker, though. She's great. <laughs> well, I can tell. Uh, she's great. She knows her rugby. She's great. Yep. She does. She yep. definitely knows her rugby. Yep. Um, That's important. So, I've just actually seen when this was dated. So, th- wasn't it this week? No. So, we got no. sent it this week. Um, the date is 27th of October 2023, which is one day before For the, the World, World Cup, Cup final. final. The post was. Interesting. And I quote, I'm looking at it right now, women's rugby will make more money than men's rugby ever did or could, mark my words. Okay, well, we will be marking that. Do you know what? I hope that the clip then, do you know when I just laughed uh, in that bigoted way? I hope that one day it gets clipped up and put on some sort of Netflix documentary about how successful the women's game is, and I was horribly, horribly wrong. I, That's what I hope. I hope that is my legacy. I hope I'm the bigger, the laughter, <laughs> laughter at women's rugby, and I'm made famous by its global success. I just don't think it's going to happen. I would I would love to see it be more popular. I was talking to my wife today about she She's really got into her cycling. She did a triathlon, um, she did an Ironman in a <laughs> few this. weeks' time. And she came back from a long cycle. She did 70-odd K today, and she said to me, I, I out for three hours and I only saw two other women cycling. And I was like, okay. He said, I saw dozens and dozens of men. And I was like, okay. He said, it's, it's a shame, isn't it, that there weren't more women? And I was like, is it? Um, <laughs> yes. Like, it would be good if there were more women getting fitter do, or doing that. Like, uh, I'm as a general, as yeah. a general principle. But... I'm all for women getting hotter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I encourage it massively. If they want to go do squats, I mean, I'd, I'd buy the weights for that. I mean, you're not having the money for the size 4.5 ball, but if you want a squat rack. But what's... I was like... Well, community <laughs> squat rack. What do you want to do? And she was like, well, it'd be better if it was more equal, men and women. So I was like, well, why do you think men... It's not that... It's not as if we so we live in uh, South Manchester, re- relatively affluent area of South Manchester. She was cycling round Wilmslow, Alderley Edge, Nutsford, Macclesfield, like these. Everyone's got means around there. It's not that the women are, have not got the money to buy their bikes. It's, so it's like, in what way do you want it to be equal? Do you want to, like, have more women doing it, but? forced to do something that they have access to but choose not to <laughs> or do you just want fewer men do it do you want to just like say no sorry sorry dave you can't go out because well, that's, that, that's, how com- to- that's how communism works <laughs> everyone everyone's equal we can't have people living on different floors of the house everyone lives on the same floor so you get rid of the staircase and everyone's so, in the basement exactly do you remember the adam carolla rich man poor man yeah i love this 
and look. I, so I never actually watched the or listened to the Corolla. Yeah, yeah. Bit. We, could, we could take this to the Patreon pod. No, no, because it is, I, okay. I, we, I can't make this stretch out for forty minutes, unfortunately. But, um, <laughs> but, um, and we've got to finish soon because I'm on an early yeah. train tomorrow. Okay. So, rich man, poor man is, um, you know, what do very rich people do, and what do very poor people do? Like they hunt for their own food. Like they yeah, wear the same thing. during the day. Uh, Travel it, places by boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they drive vintage cars. <laughs> yeah, forty year old cars. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, well, the one is cycling to work. Now you only ever see the poor man version of this if you go into crossfit at 5 30 in the morning and if you want a hidden metric it's people that that ride mountain bikes to trafford park at 5 30 yeah which is the most miserable sight of it and the contrast between those guys who bloody hell i mean you've got to have something about you to get up in the morning in the rain to go to trafford park on a mountain bike and the mammal going to K- to KPMG uh, uh, every morning on the five gram bike. There could not be a bigger difference. Hundred <laughs> percent. When you travel in early, if you drive or or run or do whatever, you see like so. I'm often running around West London at five in the morning or half five, and there are only two types of cars. There are electric cars. No, th- uh, as in there are. Hundred thousand pound ca- yes. plus cars, yes, and there are bangers. Like, there's nothing in between at that time because it's the people- someone's coming off the night shift or someone's heading to their finance job. Yeah, yeah. or going to their job as a porter, yeah. or heading to the finance job. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, working on Trafford Park is a. Oh, you must see it when you. Yeah, it's an absolute eye opener. Oh, I don't go to early CrossFit. God no, <laughs> oh, okay. I don't do six a.m. CrossFit. Six a. I'm not insane. If you're not, if you're not, not a si- psychopath. If you're not doing six a.m. Are you t- even taking it seriously? <laughs> I don't even know if you're taking it seriously. I don't think you are. Right. Yeah, well, it, to that point though, it, it's kind of exactly the same with with rugby. The reason why? What's the reason why? And this would be this is the level of questioning that that some people never get to. It's like, oh god, isn't it? Like again, oh, god, women don't cycle. That's really bad. That it's an imbalance. Well, no. Why is that the case? Because men are actually quite like their own space and their own time. Yeah. More on average. Yep. Not everyone, on average, more than women who are, on average, much more social. So they will end up doing things where they're part of a little commu- hate, part of a community, do things in groups, and cycling is not that. So hence you I get more men by- cycling. But it's the same with rugby. Yeah. When when the people running rugby try and engineer rugby to be for everyone, negates the fact that the point of rugby is that people who like violence. Or well, not violence. No violence. Physicality, physicality and challenge. Challenge. Yeah. Um, being being scared, the risk of being injured, the chance to inf- uh, to dominate someone. The discipline. The discipline like, like of the, it. The yeah. Discipline within the the training, but also the discipline within the games. Yeah. Like there, there are so many laws that you have to abide by that you need discipline. Oh, it's a great. Um, yeah, you're right. It's a great learning structure for life. So, two things I want to mention before we go. Next week, I think we will have our podcast written for us, almost. Uh, Charlie Morgan is releasing an article. I can't tell you what it is about, mm. but it, w- you, you, uh, we are going to love it. Have you, going- have you had a part in, in it? No, but I know what it's in about. The genesis- you, haven't, you haven't been involved in the genesis of it? I would, I, if I say yes, I feel like I'd be unfairly claiming credit for nothing which I've done. So yeah. I, 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 all I'm going to say is I know what it is, and I think it's coming out next week. It might even, even, even be out. I'll have a look. But anyway, it, it is for next week. Um it's 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 going to be awesome. It's going to be absolutely awesome. And if you get some of the stories in there, which I expect, it's going to be something which we will care about an awful lot. Main, most of the press won't, but it'll be awesome. So watch out for that in the Telegraph this week. The other thing is, did you see an email come through to us today? Now, the email was very nice. Um, really appreciate that. Yada, yada, yada. But the name of the team. Mm. Gordon, there's a team called Gordon League. Have you ever heard of Gordon League? Gordon League my, is this the one called My Old Club? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, afternoon, gents. I hope you don't mind me getting in touch, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, uh, once uh, he says, I'm from Gloucester, played locally for a few years after leaving Hartbury. Before I was old enough to play senior rugby, I used to travel around the southwest with my granddad watching Gordon League play. Go- I've never. Why is it called Gordon League? That's what I want to know. Yeah, he said, my granddad is a life member of the club, having played for years back in the day and has devoted so much time to it post-playing. As I got older, I struggled to attend as many matches with him until this weekend I took him to watch Gordon League versus Bream in a playoff match. By the way, National Leagues are still going. Yes, yes. apologies for that. Yeah, Essentially, um, he had a good win against yeah. uh, Plymouth. Uh, the league, 
as they're known, won the match 25-20 to 20 in a proper fixture after trailing quite heavily at half-time, down to 13 men and a red card with 15 to play. It was great to, uh, great to see the sidelines and clubhouse were rammed afterwards too. Mm. Local rugby took a bit of a battering besides not putting out as many teams or the same quality. But I love seeing it thriving this weekend. Proper blokes playing proper hard rugby. Never heard of Gordon League. I have not. Yeah, give a yeah. shout out to the Gordon League boys. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you play for Gordon League, please get in contact with me. I want to know why it's called Gordon League. Is there a place called Gordon League? Is it League? I don't why know. League? The, the, the League part's as, much, as interesting as anything. Yeah, exactly. Gordon. I've, I've already done that, Tim. Uh, I've not yeah. asked Chat GPT yet. Maybe I should ask Chat Chat G- G- Yeah, do GPT. it. Gordon League. So it's in, club. It's in he- uh, Hempstead, Hempstead, which is just southwest of the centre of Gloucester. The area seems to be called Hempstead. There's an area called St. Paul's. Uh, and uh, St. Paul's is a good, good school there, mate. Good, good rugby school, St. Paul's. And not far from the River Severn, which I guess everything in Gloucester is. Everything, also mate, goes not, right through the middle. Not, mate. not far. <laughs> from... Oh, no, no. Seven don't go through the middle. No, actually. no. There's is a that can- a canal? The canal goes through the middle. Yeah, seven just to the west. So I want to set up a league of teams with unusual names. So obviously, Disbury Talk H get, get in there. Yeah. The, you know, um, Gordon League. And there's another one which I was thinking about. Oh. <laughs> uh, honorable I've just found a picture. I don't, hat, know if, yeah. I don't know if that's a player from Gordon League. But when I when I think about like local rugby, the man in the middle of that picture that's on that comes up when you search Google is the most community rugby player I've ever seen. That guy. Perfect. So <laughs> look. <laughs> yes my boy we know what he's about going forward in the scrum yeah you yeah. know it <laughs> which brings us back to Finn Baxter where we began oh, the podcast so that, awesome yeah. so that shape that sort of shaped man has two possibilities to play rugby do you know what they are um, well, obviously prop prop and yep. fly half correct <laughs> <laughs> seen it so many say, times I've seen it so many don't go say number 8 so no no, no the, the one um, few fly halves like the, the example of that uh, uh, LSH had one X to University um, what, was, what was the guy's name Ben Davis no it was, no it wasn't Ben Davis oh shit I've forgotten what his name is he went he, he played professionally he played for X to then he went to Nottingham he was like an amazing player fullback um, it will come to me anyway but I remember I turned up for the freshest trial and I was got to chat to this guy. I was like, okay, well, you clearly tight head prop. <laughs> <laughs> Strolled out there at ten and just dominated. Just yeah. dominated. And well, where would you suppose if you met him on the streets and he said he's a professional rugby player? Mikey Teo plays. <laughs> oh, Mikey Teo, the U.S. fullback. Yeah, played yeah, played in the World Cup. Rotund fullback. I would suspect he played probably tight head prop or yeah, hooker. Yeah, hooker. Because you're not not. Enormous, was it? Fat ten. That's just a good tall. thing. I want like, what, not. I don't mean no. What's a better word than fat? Robust. Massive ten. Rotund. Robust tens. Re- yeah. Yeah. L- LSH had one who could nail the ball. But mind you, L- LSH had a team where every single player it was, it was like rugby shape. league. It was like five foot ten cubes. Oh no the no team. no! They were a bit. Yeah. Their, their entire back row yeah. was five foot ten cubes. And there, yeah, there's another guy who played for Blaine Vestignol called Barry, who was absolutely. Enormous and play ten or ten or twelve, and you would guarantee he's a prop. He could boot the ball miles. <laughs> Did we talk H is ten? Did we talk H is he could, ten? this season? Oh. He could do a job in the front row. Hang on. Oh, now, 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 you're, now. Your player coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah good yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. Really good player. Yeah. He's build- like he's like a robust ten. Well, he's built of Lee Mears. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Rest my case. Yeah, and I I do remember watching maybe both of you playing. Uh, for Broughton Park, many moons ago, Lee Askew, when your Connor, um, yeah, Connor your, Mitchell, when your tight head tight prop, prop was actually kicking, six slotted the winning kick because he was the best kicker <laughs> from halfway. That was quite something. That was that, that really was, was something. something. <laughs> it was sort Connor. of embarrassing and amazing at the same time. It, it was amazing. It was well, amazing. Who's the other prop that nails kicks all the time? Is it Ben Tamafuna who can kick? Oh, well, he can't know. scrum, so. No, can't scrum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, sh- I'm sure it's Ben Tamafuna because the other one would be Weenie Antonio. It's definitely not him. Ben, it's not him. Ben Tamafuna can kick, can properly kick. Right. How long has this gone on yeah, for? This just is... very quickly. Yeah. Have you watched Chasing the Sun yet? No. No. I know you how, have. I've seen you... your emails. I'll. I'll. Yeah. I'll 
Pete, I'll, I need, I'll to, I need to find a way of watching it. Yeah, I think I, I should watch it. Because the latest episode, I've just I've just heard from a mate, uh, well, from someone I, I've now kind of mates with in South Africa who's helping me out with the trip to Cape Town. Is it the commercial director of the Bulls? <laughs> no. I, no, I'll, I'll be one of the new owners of the Bulls. I'll be, t- I'll be going out for oh, lunch with. Oh, here we go. No, 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 no not the Bulls. Here Sto- we go. Sorry, sorry, Stormers. Oh, OK. Stormers, OK. One of, the, one of the guys that's part of the consortium that have just taken over the Stormers and tempted Kitsy. Has, has he mentioned Stephen anything Kitsy about back. the uh, travel schedule? I'll be going out for lunch. I'll be going out for lunch. <laughs> Here we go. I'll be going out for lunch with him in Cape Town. No, it's not the Bulls, not at all. Um, uh, but I've just from this guy, he said I've just watched episode four of Chasing the Sun, two, which is mm. it comes out every Sunday. He said uh, I'm not sure when you're going to get to see it, but if you don't like scrums, you're going to hate this episode. Oh, JB, oh. this is your dream, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you how to watch it in a minute. Uh, but fixtures next week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Premiership, isn't it? Oh, Premiership. Course, yeah. Come on, then. Let's rattle through these fields so, and get some sleep. Saracens host Gloucester. Home uh, win. Uh, home win. After a, a yeah. week of rest. Um, and Gloucester, oh, yeah. Gloucester obviously didn't have a week of rest. Um, well, oh, that, well, that was well, one thing, actually. Yeah, well done, Gloucester. Yeah. Just on that. I did, did watch some of it. They won, yeah, beat, beat uh, Osprey. 23-13. There was... I don't know... So, Gloucester, I think, have been struggling a little bit to sell out the stadium. It looked packed, and there was a lot of Ospreys fans... Obviously, mm. because it's not a million miles from no, from South yeah. Wales, and that's I'm not for a, a British and Irish league no. or an English and Wales Welsh no. league. Agreed, but it did. It kind of Wales would be the one that I would stomach most because yeah. it's part of the same landmass and yeah, there's there, a lot of history there. There is this history of the South Wales teams playing against Gloucester and Bristol and Bath. Maybe if the Premiership does continue to struggle and God forbid another team goes under, then Wales would have to get their house in order first, which it very much is not, but something could be done. That's as far as I'll go. Yeah. Okay, uh, next game, the Derby. Northampton Saints versus Leicester Tigers, East Midlands. Ace. That would be good. That would be very good. Where is it? Uh, At Franklin's Franklin's Gardens. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's a tasty one. Yeah. Um... Oh, Leicester will want to rub their noses in it, won't they? But They will do. Leicester, they're in danger. So you've got four games remaining. And, oh, no, they're actually... So Leicester are down in seventh, but they are only three points off the top four. Well, well, but lose this one, and they're three games and maybe yeah. five or six points off yeah, the top four. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is... So Leicester have to win. Northampton, it is less important for them to win. They're yeah. five points clear at the top. So they might... Equally, they'll want to put everything into this one, knowing if they win, they've got a little bit of a buffer, and then they can chill. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's the game way they'll be. For the Champions Cup. Yeah, yeah. They, if they win this, that's what they'll be saying. Win this game against Leicester, and then we chill out a bit for the Champions for the Champions Cup. Cup. God, I hope yeah. they can. So I, I actually think Leicester are going to win this. I just think the the physicality up front will be a bit too much. Although Northampton, test, have, it's a great test. Northampton have dealt with it very well all season. Oh, have so. you seen who's playing each other the weekend before? This is almost perfect for both teams. The, the weekend before Newcastle. the Champions Cup, Harlequins are playing Northampton. Both teams ah, that are involved in the semi-final. So they'll probably just nice. go handshake, handshake, B teams. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, although they still, it's it's still not going to make any difference traveling no. to Dublin and to lose. But Fair. anyway. But we thought uh, that about Bordeaux. But anyway. True, true. Uh, third game on the Saturday is Chiefs host Bath, which Bath will want revenge. I think Bath win that. I, I think they probably do. I think they probably do. Um, and disappointingly, just, just to kind of make my point that I was making before, um, I say England... So England play Ireland in the Women's Six Nations on Saturday. If that was, say, an 8 o'clock kickoff, I'd watch that. Uh, it's... 2.15, which means I could possibly watch the first half, but then I'm going to prioritise Northampton Saints versus Leicester Tigers. Yep. So scheduling is means that I can't watch a game that otherwise I probably would do. Who are England playing, sorry, did you say? England Island. Oh, yeah, that's worth watching. Yeah, but, it, but I won't get to watch it because <laughs> of the scheduling. Okay. I will definitely watch Saints versus Tigers. Okay, yeah, fair. Um, Saturday we have Bristol, <clears throat> who are going to continue their good run, uh, beating Newcastle Falcons and Sale host Harlequins. Oh, that, that's one for sale to win. Don't think they will. They've got to win that. Quinn's all rest. If you're at Quinn's, well, win. yeah. So Quinn's do one of two things: hmm. either, and this is what I think is going to happen. Well, no, 
Yeah, I think teams are, are, are going to prioritise the home game. So I think Northampton yeah. will put will go fully loaded against Leicester this weekend. Yes, and the Harlequins will go fully loaded against Northampton in two weeks. Yes, and will and will rest players. I think you're right against Sale. Mm, Which they... it makes sense when you've got your paying crowd, you've got a bit of home advantage. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, I just don't think. I don't know. I've got some concerns about Sale at the moment, so we'll see. There again, they battered someone last week, didn't they? Or right. two weeks ago, they had the sale have to win if they got any chance, which they probably don't. don't. Well, no, they might. They're only there's a, there's a, there's a way to go yet. They're five points behind Quinns in fourth, so anything other than probably a five maximum point win for sale. Yeah, actually, give me sale on this won't because be you're right, yeah. Quinns might rest some people, and sale have got nothing else to play for. Much yeah, like the Bulls, yes. they will just um, concentrate on their domestic league <laughs> with no relegation. Yeah. Okay, cool. There you go. Nice Good. short one this week. Yeah. Contact headchasers at gmail.com is where you can get in touch with us. Patreon.com forward slash eggchasers for extra content to support the podcast, help keep the lights on. And uh, as JP mentioned, there was a, an episode that we did last week where we covered up some of the... You sort of touched on some of the ground that we covered last week, so go and check that out. Yeah. All, the, all the extra stuff there. Patreon.com slash eggchasers. Uh, let the boys end. If there's one thing that my family and friends know me for, it's being an amazing gift giver. I owe it all to Celebrations Passport from 1-800-Flowers.com, my one-stop shopping site that has amazing gifts for every occasion. With Celebrations Passport, I get free shipping on thousands of amazing gifts. And the more gifts I give, the more perks and rewards I earn. To learn more and take your gift giving to the next level, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash ACAST. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash ACAST. Tired of ads interfering with your favorite sports podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening is available on Amazon Music for all the music plus top podcasts included with your Prime membership. Stay ahead of the game by downloading the Amazon Music app for free or go to amazon.com slash sports ad free. That's amazon.com slash sports ad free to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Even when we're on a budget, we still deserve nice things. Quince is a place to scoop up stunning high-end goods for 50 to 80% less than similar brands. They have buttery soft cashmere sweater starting at $50, luxurious Italian leather bags, and so much more. Plus, Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing. Get the high-end goods you'll love without the high price tag with Quince. Go to quince.com style for free shipping and 365-day returns.